in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed Oh, bless him because his presence is in this place. Manda grasa bala kapos, zipa kumbria sta bala daba kurata kresti bala. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. The Bible says, "I commend you to God and to the word of His grace, which is able to make you wise." and to give you an inheritance among them that are sanctified. Lift your hands and say, Lord, let your word come tonight to set me free, to deliver me, to prosper me, to enlighten me, that I will rule in the day and rule in the night, that I will be a true ambassador of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's great to have everyone around this night. Good evening. Just walk up to 10 people, give them a big hug, tell them it's good to have you around. Hallelujah. Why are you in a hurry to sit down tonight? Hallelujah. Don't worry, I understand it's the revelation that you are seated with Christ. Hallelujah. Can we worship God for just two minutes? Nina Kawo Yabo. Nina Kawo Yabo Sirkin Salama Kene Sirkin Salama Sirkin Salama Kene Sirkin Salama Sirkin Salama Nina Kawo Yabo Kawo Yabo Sirkin Salama Kene Sirkin Salama Sirkin Salama Kene Sirkin Salama Sirkin Salama Shilala Namo Sitaria Namo Namo Leva Maya Namo Sanama
tonight Lord we declare that you are the king of peace the prince of peace you have come to bless us tonight let your word bless us in the name of Jesus hallelujah God bless you please be seated Hallelujah. The Bible says in his presence there is fullness of joy and pleasures at his right hand forevermore. Tonight I'll be teaching on something that I believe will change your life. Hallelujah. I know that every message that comes here is very powerful. But tonight I want to share with you something very personal and I believe it will bless you. Hallelujah. I, when God told me about this message, I didn't know what to call it. And then I had a dream this morning and I saw the title, Commanding Results. I didn't write it, I saw it. I want to share with you something powerful tonight, if you will believe. Mm. Make champions out of this message, my father. You see, many of you, when you hear the word like this, you just think it's a caption to motivate you. No, no. To the extent that I lacked what message would encapsulate, what title. And I said, Lord, you have to help me. And while I slept, the night I just saw it call it commanding results hallelujah what makes certain people to move in levels of results levels of power the manifestations of the word of God what makes certain ministries prosper and increase what makes certain individuals look like angels and gods upon the earth? Hallelujah. What makes others very blessed and prosperous? What makes others influential and command such degree of power and grace from the throne? Commanding results. Never forget this message for the rest of your life. Please, final year students, open up your ears, your heart, your spirit, your life. And receive this message tonight. Oh, 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 oh. seen with our eyes the manifestations of your word the ancient have told us that this was the secret of the power that commanded authority in their time tonight Lord as we explore this ancient book I pray that the potency of your power will be made manifest in our lives Lord I pray that we will not 
disregard this revelation tonight. I pray that we will believe it. We will respect it. We will obey it. And Lord, we are sure that you will perform. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Matthew 21. Matthew 21. Say in the name of Jesus. The word of God is making me a sign and a wonder. Like the ancients of old, the generals of old, the mighty men of old, I am making history by the power of the word. I believe it. I respect it. In Jesus' name. Matthew 21. I start reading from verse 18. Matthew 21. If you are there, say amen. amen. Now in the morning as he returned to the city, he was hungry. Say he was hungry. So the first thing we see in this chapter is that there is hunger. Hallelujah. And when he saw a fig tree along the way, he came to it and found nothing on it but leaves. Say after me, but leaves. Only and said to it, Let no fruit grow on thee henceforth forever. And presently the fig tree withered away. The Bible says Jesus was walking and then he saw a tree because he was hungry. Hallelujah. So every hungry man is satisfied when he eats of the fruit of a tree. Are you listening to me? And the Bible says that Jesus saw a tree from afar. It looked wonderful, green. And Jesus came to it and found out that it had only leaves and no fruit. Hallelujah. Only leaves and no fruit. And he was angry. It didn't look like he loved that tree because he cursed the tree out of anger. He said, let no fruit come out of you again. Why do you keep deceiving people as though you are a tree that is blossoming? And you make hungry people come to you only to find out that there are only leaves and no fruit. Hallelujah. Okay, thank you. I am sure that Jesus was not the only one who had been deceived by that tree. That tree had a track record of deceiving many people by looking so green. Hallelujah. And every hungry person that was passing would see that tree and believe that that tree would satisfy its hunger. And the Bible says when Jesus came close, he thought the leaves were in, the fruit was inside and he pushed the evergreen leaves. No fruit. What kind of tragedy is this that a tree can grow to a full size, have, I mean, uh, leaves all over and then there is no fruit. And Jesus cursed it in anger. Hallelujah. That tree reminds me of many lives and many believers. We look anointed. We talk anointed. We act anointed. Hallelujah. Reminds me of many ministries. Reminds me of many men of God. Many pastors and apostles and prophets. Hallelujah. Reminds me of all kinds of people. Many leaders. They look like they are green. They look attractive. Hallelujah. And then you come near only to find out that there is no fruit that can satisfy the hunger of people. You will be blessed tonight. Oh. You will be blessed tonight. That's a contrast because you see, Jesus never said he is glorified when you have leaves. John 15 verse 8. He says, Herein is the Father glorified. That ye bear much fruit. This is what brings glory to the Father. Not that you become green. Hallelujah. 
Not that you just become green and blossom, but you bear fruit. Hallelujah. Because when the hungry come, they are looking. The Bible says Jesus was hungry. If you were not hungry, nothing will make him to look for a tree. Because he was passing and he was hungry. And then he saw a tree that attracted him by the leaves. And he came to the tree only to be surprised that there was no fruit. Say, I will bear fruit. Much fruit. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And so why are certain lives like this? You find out that there is no fruit whatsoever. Listen to me. If you have been serving the Lord for years and years and there is nothing in your life as a sign of a fruit, something is wrong. The end of faith is a performance and a manifestation. But I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which has been committed he said being confident of this very thing that he which has begun a good work he is able to perform it to the end so the life of a christian eventually in your journey some fruit should begin to manifest that can attest to the fact that you are planted psalms 1 Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. He said, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on that law doth he meditate day and night. How are we sure he meditates day and night? Because eventually he shall be like a tree that is planted by the streams of water. Other trees receive their nourishment from the rain, but this guy receives his own from under. He is planted by the rivers as a result he yields his fruits in season and whose leaf does not wither but the bible tells us that we see someone mimicking that blessed man with only leaves and no fruit hallelujah the bible says he shall be compared to a tree that is planted how will men who are afar, because they may not see the river that he's planted close to. So how will they see? He will yield his fruit in season. Yes, we agree that, okay, it takes a while for a believer to crystallize the word of God and believe it and absorb it. But eventually, there should be a sign. The Bible says, and Elijah prayed and he told his servant, go and check. He went, he said, there is no sign. And he prayed at the seventh time, there was a sign. There will always be a sign that lets us know whether you are growing, whether you are commanding power and authority. If it is the real tongues you have been praying for years, something in your life, there should be a signature upon your life that there is progress are you listening to me if the bible says the word of god is able to make you wise and you have truly been meditating on that word eventually we should see the fruits of divine wisdom are you listening to me the bible promises us certain things as believers when we walk in the lord if you have been walking and living by the word truly a time must come when men can testify and say there is an evidence. Say after me, evidence. There must be an evidence. Noah told men that God told him that rain was coming, true or false. It took a long time. But eventually, the Bible says that God vindicated him. Abraham was a man who trusted God. And even when he was 75 years, hallelujah, a promise was made to him. And he waited 25 years for that promise. But eventually, the end of faith is a performance. If you, if you have put your trust and your faith in the word of God, eventually, there must be a performance. Every area of your life cannot be a barren land forever. Are you listening to me? If one area of your life is receiving results, it's a sign that the other area will come. So God will encourage you. 
if academically you are not doing well spiritually you are not doing well health wise you are not doing well suddenly when you begin to find out that the anointing of the spirit is at work in you what does it tell you it means fruit is already being produced is that correct and it will motivate you to begin to trust his word in other areas but where every of your life is a dead a barren wilderness something is wrong are you listening to me there are many churches and many people that have given excuses forever they pray more than anybody else they fast more than anybody else hallelujah there are all kinds of devotionals circulating in town but i want to ask you a question tonight how long do you want to watch the leaves on your tree when will that leaf begin to translate into fruit that the hungry can come and begin to eat because you see it is deceit jesus saw a tree and was attracted and when he came to the tree he just found leaves and there was no fruit and he was angry and he cursed the tree he said may fruit never come out of you again hallelujah two secrets tonight number one you want to command results in your life number one you must have absolute faith in god absolute faith in god demonstrated by total obedience absolute faith don't just write faith in God absolute faith in God absolute faith in the word of God demonstrated by total obedience unwavering obedience hmm. absolute faith that you believe that God is faithful and that God is able the thousands of promises that are scattered in this Bible, God cannot be joking with you. Hallelujah. Absolute faith. Listen, we have ended up complicating Christianity. But do you know, I, I noticed that most of the people that shook their generation, most of them were not even educated people. They took the Bible. Smith Wigglesworth, he was a cobbler. His wife was even the woman of God. And he just found in his Bible John 14 verse 12. Hallelujah. He said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, if thou let's read it. John 14. Absolute faith. I found out that what most believers have is hope, not faith. Many believers hope in God. They don't have faith in God. They just hope that one day in the sweet by and by. Verse 12. John 14 verse 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me. Who is speaking here? This is Jesus Christ. The works that I do, he shall also do and greater works say greater works and greater works shall he do this is jesus christ talking here not an angel if he sent a prophet would have said oh the prophet didn't hear well are you listening to me jesus himself said this verily verily i say unto you he that believes and smith wigglesworth found this and said lord are you serious about this that an uneducated person like me if i can believe if i can believe and god said yes catherine kuman found this amphi mcpherson found this generals of old found this verily verily he that believes not he that is born again not he that is praying in tongues he that believes absolute trust The works that I do, the works that I do, he shall also do. He said, and greater works, greater works. 
Many people have tried to give every kind of carnal interpretation. Brother, greater means greater. You went to school. Greater means greater. Greater works. That means if you are not seeing greater works, what is the diagnosis? You do not believe. Now, let me tell you something. When it comes to spiritual growth, you have to apply a lot of humility because the word of God has a way of flogging you and embarrassing you. When I was studying this scripture, I said, Lord, does that mean I don't believe in you? God says, simple, to the degree to which you are seeing my works. And I knew I had to accept it. Because brothers and sisters, I have seen a mystery in our world that is not everything that is impossible for everybody. There are some people, some things are possible for. Kabo are you listening to me? There are some people standing and praying. Oh Lord, bring a boat. And then we see others get on that water and begin to move. The fact that there is one person doing what you are not doing, it kills the excuse that is God that is responsible. Are you listening to me? he that believes in me the works i remember one of the first times i read this scripture i was studying pastor chris's message and Kenyon on faith we we're going to prepare for crusade never had that experience we didn't know what to expect but we took this word and said lord this is true how many of you truly believe in god how many of you believe in God? Let me tell you something. Ejimi did something that touched me. I remember during his mother's um, burial. He just came out and laughed. And said. Those who didn't even affect them. They just sat down and were looking. And he said God loaned them the mother for a number of years. And he was so happy. And they kept saying God is faithful and I move forward. There are, listen. There are many of you who have been sitting grumbling shouting at god saying god you are not true do you know you are one over how many people who are saying god is faithful if you say god is not faithful there are angels whose voices are louder than your own they, it will overshadow your own belief in an instant one word holy are you listening to me do you believe god's word Many of you have been reading your Bible. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. There are many pastors, there are many ministries who only open the Bible because they are looking for messages to preach to people. They don't believe. It's easy to stand and wear suit and make noise on Sunday or on Wednesday or on Friday or whatever the meeting days are. There are many leaders who truly do not believe the word of God. Tonight I'm asking you, do you believe the word of God? Do you believe that Jesus Christ and all the promises that he has put in the word for you, can you take it with childlike simplicity and say, Lord, I believe. Do you believe Jeremiah 29 verse 11 that says the thoughts I think towards you? There are many of you from the time you got to final year, your fear is a direct sign that you don't believe God. Whatever I fear in my life, the faith and the revelation of God's word has not entered there because perfect love casts out fear. So if you are afraid of the future, let me assure you that the revelation of God's word that secures your future has not entered you yet. Are you listening to me? Absolute trust. Father Abraham, and the generals of old these guys believed god and there was a performance and we began to see the fruit and the manifestation of that faith you came to abu and you believed god that you'll be a success then your first result 1.5 seven carryovers hey, hey god you said this boy you just said lord i believe you you just said lord i believe you you just said no matter what lord your word is true 
And I know that this is not over. Hallelujah. Your uncle promised you that it's going to be blessing you. Suddenly your uncle said, I've changed my mind. He said, ah, but uncle, he said, the only constant thing in life is change. I have changed my mind. And suddenly fear grips you. I tell you, friends, fear is an indication that the word of God has not crystallized in that area in your life. For when the word of God truly comes, it drives out fear. Say, I refuse to fear. There are so many believers living in the world. We confess God's word. We believe God's word in quote. But then, the sign that we have not believed is we are still afraid. And then there is no performance in our lives. Those who command results. There are many of you that believe you are carrying the healing anointing. You have not prayed for one sick body because you are afraid of embarrassment. You don't believe it. You don't believe it. Hallelujah. I have a passion to get you to a point where you believe the word of God. Because the Bible says, if thou canst believe, all things are possible. I challenge myself every time I say, Lord, why am I seeing that I, I, I was doing a Bible study with someone yesterday day before okay yesterday I think Sandra yes we're having Bible study and we were talking about the life the ministry of Jesus Christ and tears filled my eyes while I was talking because I couldn't deny the fact that my life was far from the Jesus life that I saw this guy was a man of faith nothing moved him he believed the father he believed the word he had such audacity he commanded results believe us what is wrong with us hallelujah i tell you the truth it's easy to feel like you are trying and i understand you are doing your best but it does not negate the fact that this revelation has not yet entered us because when the word enters you, I tell you there is a performance. I will die believing this thing I'm sharing with you. How much of God do you believe? Many of us have our spiritual life. Then we have our normal life. The one that works with wisdom. Let's be wise. Let's reason now. Don't be stupid. So you, we make bold claims. But when we step out there, there are all kinds of fears and we begin to patch the word of God and, and manifest auxiliary faith. The Lord is asking you a question tonight. Do you have absolute faith in him? Hallelujah. I don't know if I can answer and say, Lord, I have absolute faith in you. Maybe I can say I have faith, but it may not be absolute because I know what absolute faith has done in thy Bible. I've read my Bible very well. And men who had absolute faith, they rose beyond limitations and shook their generation. They had no internet. Are you listening to me? No people that produce posters. Look at the life of Jesus for instance. The Bible says in the book of Mark, that Jesus was in a room and he said the whole city came and gathered in front of the room what what kind of result will a man command like this there are all kinds of excuses we keep giving ourselves read the Bible the, see the secret of ENI is found in Mark 1 2 3 go and read it the Bible says Jesus went to Capernaum there multitudes heard about him and they came Jesus went to the desert the same multitudes came Jesus went by the seaside the same multitudes came Jesus climbed the mountain the same multitudes came same result same power he casted out devils he healed the sick he preached the word he taught the word the performance look at me all of you look up if you were to suddenly see the vision of Jesus Christ 
the real Jesus and he stood here and Jesus suddenly made an announcement and said I am giving you 10 minutes the first 10 people who come to me whatever their needs are it will be met how many of you will check your we before coming why are you not doing that to me simple I you you do not yet trust that my level of competence has gotten to that place are you listening to me if you are hungry for God you have to get the truth and press to it I assure you listen to me brothers and sisters if Jesus Christ walked here right now before you finish the ministers will gap you because they will fly on his leg and say Jesus you don't know how I've waited I already have my list I'm not about to write and you just drop it every time people heard about Jesus they started laughing you know why they knew the result had come they just started laughing their own issue was to get to see him but your issue is not to see me your issue is that is to ascertain Lord now that I've seen Joshua help him let there be grace that is available this night to at least be able to meet some of my needs I tell you you don't know how it pains me when people come up here and say I wrote seven prayer points in a miracle service two have been answered in my mind I say okay seven minus two is what help me seven minus two is what if you drop your prayer point directly to the person Christ how many will be met tell me how many will be met this is the kind of hunger and honesty that will drive you to the anointing I refuse to give excuses it simply means there is a light that I've not seen there is a depth of anointing I've not stepped into there is a dimension of the operation of the spirit that I've not gotten to yet that's why whether you say Apostle Josh Bishop Josh I won't be misled with all of those nonsense there is work to be done are you listening to me Those of you who are already confident i'm laying hands on three people i'm laying hands on five people you stopped reading your bible that's why pick up your bible and read it again and be ashamed of your pride and find out that there is work to be done i tell you if ministers knew this the bible would be the best tool that they will have i refuse to give excuses are you listening to me that my life will make such a mark see we have dwelt in this unbelief to a point that when anybody is exceptional people say this guy is not real oh be careful this Joshua Selman guy is not real I'm warning you now tomorrow don't say it's any kind of thing because people are so complacent the average pastor there are three things that many men of God are looking for and they'll be satisfied in ministry one to have a crowd two to at least be able to say something from this Bible. It doesn't matter what it is. Number three. And then let there be at least just one person who will fall. They say you think I'm playing. Oh, what a shame. What a shame. What a shame. Is that what you think will shake the world? That's not uncommon enough. We are talking about commanding authority over territories. One miracle that, let me tell you something. In the days of the generals, all newspapers was about the generals and the fearful miracles they did. Right now, when last, the man must pay for advert. If you see advert in the newspaper, he paid for it. To say, okay, my program is around, please just check. Are you listening to me? There are some people in Zaria that have never even heard that there is anything called koinonia. What are we boasting for? Hmm. Look at Elijah. He stands somewhere. The whole city, the whole city didn't hear him. He just said there shall not be rain. The whiplash of drought started making people find out who is responsible for this. I say, one guy, Elijah, one man like this. And the gist started spreading. Elijah, 
who is he they said go and look for him now and the king says because the king's ego is is spoiled he's embarrassed he says go and catch that man 50 people march and stand and elijah is taking fresh air on the mountain and they interrupt his fellowship this was a man like you are you listening to me old covenant for you new creation old covenant elijah looks and says if i be a man of god let fire come down right now we have different ways of speaking when you stand you say if i be standing in the authority and moving in the office the department and the office of the christ let it come fire doesn't come you're not getting it we are just teaching congregations english and vocabulary we are just having a brilliant and an educated but powerless church well right now there's improvement everybody is falling everywhere everybody is falling everywhere just watch tv a man of signs and wonders before they say anything people just fall and that's all you have to show the world something is wrong that's all you have to show the world that a man just fell down and then they all now prophets himself is even him come you are, you are gladys you are from the east your mother is sick your uncle traveled you are an abu student and then the congregation claps what, what how look real prophets this is what they say there is coming a problem in zaria but i stop it that's a real mandate that you stand and tell the people what satan wants to do and you stop it the creative power of the spoken word we just have a group of revelatory people even the native doctors can create they have helped to give you the one to reveal when are we going to get angry that we are going to begin to command territorial results listen if two dead people how many if two dead people rise in koinonia i assure you if you come by 2 30 next friday you will stand outside critics look at the bible the bible says people came and filled where jesus was sitting mark chapter 2 and the bible says others were standing outside when jesus saw the fate of the man that they brought the bible says the scribes who came early and were seated in front they said why are you forgiving his sins if they came late they would have been outside even then they rushed and came early for that meeting jesus had no nonsense he climbed the mountain brothers and sisters human beings like you stayed with a man for three days on the mountain The closest thing to what we are supposed to do is what government officials and politicians are doing go to the house of politicians you will see a man who has five or six children sitting outside you say why is he i'm waiting for his excellency that's the, it's called hunger the man has fruit where he got it is irrelevant he shall has fruit when believers come to church and after one hour it's not true i tell you the truth is a sign of lack of true fire in the days of Amphi McPherson listen she had a program called stretcher only meaning if you are not sick you are not invited for that meeting what is our the, name the kind of conferences we have right now business special for only the ones that are successful only you are not successful you are not a businessman walk outside the people are already successful pastor don't lie it's not your anointing that is making them successful these guys suffered in the bowels of time and got their money and then you stand and say receive they have it already somebody is budgeting to buy a car of five million he has gotten 4.8 you are speaking speaking what takes two months salary to complete it and buy his car if i can speak to you and tomorrow they give you a car I'm a real prophet. Don't go and meet somebody that's already tried. If I meet Pastor Williams, I say, hey, Jim, tomorrow, of course. Common sense tells me he's... Ah. 
am I challenging you I know you don't like the message sorry you came you must hear it this night koinonia where hunger is put in you again see a man called St. Patrick let me tell you something about St. Patrick hallelujah St. Patrick was such a powerful man he was a dangerous man a snake beat in Ireland a snake beat a, a woman's daughter and she was crying and St. Patrick was just meandering around the street and he saw her he said madam why are you crying she said a snake beat her he said a snake beat you where where did the snake go to hallelujah and they showed him the forest he entered and searched for the snake he held it he said you and your kind i banish you from this land till today there's no snake in ireland hallelujah the king got to hear just about saint patrick he said who is that man they said that guy is we don't even know what to call him and the king said what sign will he show me the king's son died six months he said go and call saint patrick six months they had put him in the grave when saint patrick came true life story saint patrick looked he signed his signature and wrote saint patrick on the grave he said dig it out that's how they carried that boy out what are we boasting for it was St. Patrick that began what you hear in Hubert Angel's channel. Christ in me. Christ beside me. Christ before me. Christ above me. Today we say a man of faith and power and he comes with his big stomach. No revelation. Close heavens. Every kind of thing. He says, well, I was in my hotel room. Or God performed. And we waste people's time Telling them the price of suits that we are buying. I'm challenging you tonight. Commanding results. Do you believe in the Lord? There was a monk. They were trying to build their church. A Catholic monk. And I think they made a mistake in the measurement. And then they came and the wood was short. The guy just held the wood and started moving. That's how he drew it and completed it. I tell you the truth. Auntie McPherson will organize programs. The only people invited are those on stretchers. That's a real miracle service, not what we are doing. Charles and Francis Hunter, they work close to some of these dimensions. In a single meeting, they raise 100 wheelchairs brothers and sisters replace all the seats that are in this place just imagine in your mind they are wheelchairs and just move them here imagine if everybody here were crippled this is the kind of service there are many men of god if you invite them in a service and they see three people on wheelchair they just do as if they didn't see i know my god will heal they are laying hands and they'll just jump the person and then you say what manner of man is jesus he made the lame to walk. I wonder what the lame person is singing. And the shadows of Peter. Men lined up in the streets. Because they said, Peter is coming, Peter is coming. And I can imagine a woman, please come from bed. And Peter says, bless you, bless you. Suddenly you are hearing shouts. Hallelujah, thank you Jesus if we have half of that anointing i will put this thing will be a basket a bowl and then you put it you write my name joshua and then my picture will be here you come and touch it lick it put it in your wallet put it in your purse bath with the pour water on it and go and bath madness all those things because we do not understand women shook their generations right now there are men of god who are on tv but nobody knows them they air three times a week as they are saying now we thank you for this broadcast you cannot even remember who preached again the only thing you remember is gloss suit as if they printed it in a, in a 
printing press. Noise. Leaves with no fruit. Hallelujah. Am I challenging you? Because we need to rise. Friends, this is an apostolic generation. You cannot be satisfied with what we are seeing. What we are doing now is joke. I tell you it's not ministry yet. Archbishop Benson Idahosa. He was driving. Okay, they were driving him. An armed robber stopped them. Park, park, stop. The driver was afraid. Idahosa just opened his mouth. He told the person to open the door for him first. He came out. The armed robber, lie down, lie down. He just looked at them. He said, one of three things must happen to you this night. Either you will be paralyzed, you will be blind, or you will die. But one must happen this night. Will Lamb Brothers ever, Spokane was called the cleanest city during the time of John G. Lake. You know the way they admit people in Shika? That's how you come to his hospital. You collect a form. To prove that you had the healing anointing, you will go and bring seven people that you healed. That's how he admits. If you say you are sensing the call of God upon your life, he said, go and bring seven people with what used to happen to them and what you have done. Then he will consider whether you are qualified to be his staff. Can you imagine? That was a yastic. Now everybody, a man with a strong healing anointing. I came all the way 50 kilometers to tell you. Your... While they are talking, the demons are saying, now wow. Saying, before, when men were around, there was fire. You know these demons have been around since. They knew the fire upon these men. And they ask one another, they say, ah, when these guys died, they didn't transfer anything. And all of those men, they were called brother this, brother that. Now you call Joshua Selman an apostle. You know, I fear that name because I just remember Apostle Paul, Apostle Smith Wigglesworth, Apostle John G. Lake, Apostle St. Patrick, Apostle Josh. For where? For where? You won't deceive me. No way. But many of you are already parading sons and daughters. He said, call me pastor this. Go and sit down. Go and sit down in one place and gather yourself together and first ask what God has called you to do. Say in the name of Jesus, I believe. And yet the Bible says in Hebrews chapter 11, it says so that day without us, that means our generation is still coming. The Bible says this. Do you know before Smith Wigglesworth died? I'll share with you some stories today. Before Smith Wigglesworth died, when he was laying hands on Lester Sumro, he told him something. He said, look, make sure you don't die with your anointing. He said, look for young men that are serious and transfer this anointing to them. And then he laid hands on him and began to prophesy. He said, I see a generation. A generation that what we have done will look like a step out of the cave compared to what they are doing. Apostle Babalola, CAC. You see, there are many denominations today that don't, do not even believe what their founders live for. Apostle Babalola, it was said, listen, it was said that that guy was so powerful. A time came when he was preaching and he started lifting, literally. See, the water that, the concept of holy water came from him. He was thirsty, praying on a mountain. And there was no water and he struck the rock and said, let water come. Men. They are the type you say men to. Not, 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 not the, the, the people who are saying men. We are, we are called, you call us children. Am I challenging you? Do you know Apostle Babalola was moving? There was a council. Now, this one, I attended a pastor's conference by Apostle A.T.B. Williams in Kafanchang. 
Emmanuel Kure's conference and he, and he was saying this he said that Apostle Babalola when they wanted to call him when people said there's a gentleman that had the fire of God there were certain elders like seven or eight of them they said they don't believe he's called look at the miracles that this man was doing they said they are not yet convinced that he has the anointing in other words this guy is still a joker he's playing ministry all of them prayed and a few said actually they have received confirmation the elders refused they say until god speaks to every one of them one by one before they were agreed one day they were praying together and there was a madman running and disturbing people in the street and apostle babalola just came out from the forest he was just moving in the city not going for a program no protocol no mic he was just meandering around the street and that guy came out and people were running yard matches and was driving people and then the elders were watching the lord told them to watch and they were watching through the window and apostle Baba, when the madman came close to him he said but you are not mad now he collected his matches he said sit down here please that was how those men confirmed that god really called this guy now how do we confirm that god has called a man once you just see a guy that is handsome he looks like Eliab you just say surely surely and see you see ministers and the body of Christ there is no pressure whatsoever on us to press for more you look at a man of God and see that he's absolutely satisfied you even hear some men of God say I'm so fulfilled and he's showing you his watch I'm so fulfilled There are sick people coming there are oppressed people coming and jesus caused that victory he said because you have deceived me you made me to come all the way you made me to do everything i'm doing and you have been deceiving many like that let me tell you there are many people that god himself would dethrone out of ministry and out of certain places of honor because if we keep deceiving god's people and claiming come for miracle service are the people really receiving miracles or do we just celebrate one miracle a fractured hand got healed when i was watching what the media people played i tell you i i was happy but i was angry at the same time or a robot healed people to a point that he was tired they just prayed on a mountain and told people to come and touch it that's the real me now people drink one gallon of water and nothing happens he said drink it prophetic water you drink it you 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 they say take come and buy a special i saw a man of god praying for one woman the anointing oil is like this 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 uh, uh so, so, uh, this pure tag bottle he poured some on her head told her to pour some Hi. what men of god do to people and ask her to drink everything that's how she drank in my presence it was on, on tv drank everything the man said yes if you drink oil like that you will be sick you will be very sick we spend over 30 minutes trying to minister to one person look at Jesus I will be made clean come on he saw the demons go and they left what is wrong am i is the only me that is having this anger many of you are saying i won't be a man of god please turn and face these people say i believe the word of god the second key your faith can be seen friends the second key I'll share this quickly and we'll pray. This is one of the reasons why many people do not gain the anointing to command results. I call it the law of honor. Write it quickly. One day the Lord showed me a scripture. Turn with me to Hebrews 7 verse 1. If you have been sleeping, wake up because your life is about to change. Hebrews so open your eyes 
open your ears and then you'll understand that the Lord is here open your eyes open your ears and then you'll understand that the Lord is here Hebrews 7 verse 7 let me show you this is one of the biggest secrets of my life I want to share with you something that will change your life tonight I tell you if you believe this if you believe this you will be changed forever behold I show you a mystery Lord open our eyes respect what you are about to hear <laughs> verse 1 for this Melchizedek king of Salem priest of the most high God who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and what blessed him number two to whom also abraham gave a tenth part of all first being by interpretation king of righteousness and after that also king of salem which is king of peace three without father without mother without descent having neither beginning of days nor end of life but made like unto the son of god abided a priest continually verse six but he whose descent is not counted from them received tithes from Abraham and blessed him of all the promises. Verse 7, read with me together. One to go. And without all contradiction, the less is blessed of the better. Read it one more time. And without all contradiction, the less is blessed. Stand up. Please stand up. Just stand up. Pray a prayer in one minute and say, Lord, my life is about to change as I hear this revelation. I humble myself. Let your word come as light. Please pray this prayer just one minute because God is about to change lives right now. God is about to shift levels. Please pray. Oh, yes, doors will open forever for certain people. Lord, I pray. I pray. This revelation has changed my life. It has changed the lives of many. I pray that men will be commanders of results. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please sit down. Look at this. Listen to me. Let me give you certain revelations. Number one. You must realize that in the kingdom of God, listen, listen to me. The anointing is carried in the kingdom of God through human vessels. Are you listening to me? Human vessels are the carriers of God's power, of God's unction, of God's ability. And the Bible says without contradiction. In other words, this one, you can't argue on it. You can't preach another message about it. He said the lesser is blessed of the greater. Abraham is the father of what many people call the Abrahamic covenant. The Bible makes us to understand that the king came, I mean that Abraham came from the slaughter of certain people and he spoiled them. The Bible says he came and he took a tenth of the offering and he blessed one man called Melchizedek. Hallelujah. And the Bible says Melchizedek looked at Abraham and blessed Abraham and said blessed be Abraham possessor of the most high and Paul is giving us a revelation here using the life of Melchizedek and Abraham and he told him he said without contradiction in the realm of the spirit it is only the lesser are you listening to me it's only one who is higher who has the capacity pastor please come who has the capacity to take you and to lift you into his higher place of anointing follow me in the realm of the spirit listen to me only one who is higher than you has the capacity to draw you and the limit to which he can draw you is the limit of his anointing no man can draw you above his anointing are you listening to me that's why when God wanted to swear, he looked for one who was higher than him so he could submit to him and say, please help me swear to these people. When he did not find anybody, he said, oh, since I'm the only one, I swear by myself. Are you listening to me? 
powerful principle listen listen i want to give you the unbeatable secret the unbeatable secret of the anointing growing in the anointing and financial prosperity when you want to rise you don't sow to people lower than you they can't lift you when you get to your wealthy place this is called charity are you listening to me you sow upwards and then you are called higher are you following me now without contradiction it is only the lesser that receives from the greater hallelujah i want to show you the principle of walking in the anointing i never allow any man who is higher or greater than me do anything in my presence that i can do for many of you you have been misled and deceived that you only give that honor to your pastor or your spiritual father and many of you have passed anointings that can set you free but because of the stereotype of ministry it has to be me my pastor my father my this and that listen to me and without contradiction the lesser is empowered and lifted to the realm of the greater When I saw this scripture, I repented from talking about men of God and people. I want to show you why the doors are shut for many people and many ministries and many individuals. Hallelujah. Listen to me. In 2004, I wanted the anointing so badly. I had been seeing the manifestation of God's spirit in my life. And Reinhard Bonke came for a crusade in Joss. Are you listening to me? Reinhard Bonke came for a crusade in Joss. I left Zaria and I ran to Joss. The first day, there was a mighty manifestation. Hundreds of thousands of people came. Are you listening to me? The second day, I was angry. You know why? Because I didn't serve in that crusade. I knew that when you honor a man, listen to me. Honor opens the door of any man's anointing. You will never receive of the anointing of a man you dishonor and criticize. I went, pastor, listen, for six hours, I was standing in that crusade ground. You know what I was doing? I was looking for what to do. There was nothing to be done. Later on, I saw them pushing people who were sick. I said, beautiful. I said, can I join them? They said, I'm not part of the committee. They trained them. I said, committee or no committee. I came from Zaria with a hunger. I was pushing the people and I was praying in tongues. Nobody knew me then. Without controversy, the lesser is blessed of the greater. When I pushed the wheelchairs, I stood there. People were packed full. And I stood there. I said, Lord, I honor this servant of yours. I know that this man is great. I didn't give him any seed. But I honored him in my spirit. I said, Lord, I believe this guy is a career of an anointing. I respect it. I believe it. I covet it. When I stood there, Renard Bonke finished preaching. And they, they prayed for people for salvation. They wanted to pray for baptisms. Then, I had not started praying for people for baptism. And I said, Lord, how can one man pray for hundreds of thousands of people and they will receive the Holy Ghost? And I stood. I said, Lord, I believe. And I will never forget Renard Bonke was going to drink water. Suddenly, I looked up. And for the first time, I saw the visible manifestation of the Holy Spirit. I saw a bed that would be as big as this auditorium. Was just hovering around the people. You know, his crusades, you stand. Suddenly, I saw it had silvery wings. And the, the Lord just took me to this scripture. Where Elisha told Elijah, if you can see me. If you can see me as I'm taking up suddenly i saw that bed i thought other people were seeing it but i realized that i was the only one who was seeing it do you know by the time i finished the encounter with that manifestation of the holy spirit i turned and i found out that i was already back in the stage i don't know when i turned to face babe. and from that day an anointing came upon my life there is no one i pray for for the baptism who does not get filled with the holy ghost are you listening to me many of you have cultivated the attitude 
of dishonoring people. I will never forget one time that I went to go and buy, was it sugar cane or something? And I saw two old women. Many of you will not honor them because they are not your pastor. And I saw the old women, just 10 or 15 naira. I paid for them and they said, you know how old women bless. They were speaking and I didn't hear what they said, but I will never forget one thing one of the women said. He said, forever you will walk on gold. That's what she told me. Are you listening to me? As you see me like this, brothers and sisters, I am a product of many encounters and many anointings. Because I realize everything you have not seen in your life, you have not known how to receive it. Whatever it is that you have not seen in your life, you have not yet known how to receive it. Because it's available. Are you listening to me? Before Charles and Francis Hunter died, when I heard that they died, I cried. You know why I cried? Because I was planning that I was going to go to the US. And my plan was that I was going to book two weeks with them. Guess what I wanted to go and do? Not to go and preach for them the way many of you want to do. I wanted to go and scrub their toilets and wash their clothes for two weeks. I wanted to beg them to allow me to scrub the toilets and wash their clothes for two weeks. And without controversy, the lesser is blessed of the greater. Are you listening to me? It's a law. Whoever has what you do not have has the ability to impart it upon you. Whether it's your roommate, whether it's your brother. Listen, there are many barren women who will remain barren because they do not know how to open the doors of destiny. If you are a barren woman, go and find a woman that has given birth and say, Madam, can I please wash your plate? And without controversy, the lesser. They may not pray for you. It's a law that happens automatically. Are you listening to me? See, 2 Chronicles. 2 Chronicles chapter 9 verse 1. The Bible tells us something. Because of time, I may not read it. Just write it. Look up, please. I studied my Bible and I saw that this principle was consistent. Do you remember the Bible talks about Solomon? Pastor, please sit down. Hallelujah. The Bible says Solomon was so blessed. He was so wealthy. Is that correct? When his news got round and the queen of Sheba heard about him, the Bible says the queen of Sheba gathered seeds. What did she do? How will you run to a man who is already prosperous and you are carrying seeds? Without controversy, the lesser can bring you into his realm. Cheaply. Are you listening to me? And the Bible says she came and met Solomon. And when she spoke with Solomon, the first thing she did, there's no time. The first thing she did was to acknowledge the fact that Solomon was greater than her. Listen, it is not weakness to realize that somebody is better than you. In this realm, there are people you are better than and there are people who are better than you. The ability to acknowledge them will open up their anointing for you. Are you listening to me? She acknowledged that truly there was no man like Solomon. And guess the next thing she did? She packaged her gifts and she gave Solomon question. How do you bless a man who is already blessed? Are you listening to me? Because he has an anointing that can bring you to his realm. That woman heard of the fame of Solomon and said, "Ah, ah no, no, I need to find out what is going on. And the Bible says she sowed and Solomon gave her everything she needed. That's what the Bible says. Are you listening to me? If your brother or your sister is not married, instead of casting out devils and getting angry, go and find a married couple and look at them. They just got married and say, please, um, I bought a small gift to just bless you. And without controversy, you are fulfilling a law in the spirit. Suddenly, you see yourself walking in the anointing. I used to see Benny Hinn. I loved him so much. I See, honor doesn't just mean you package a seed. 
the bible says honor the lord with your tithes many of you have been giving your tithes that's why the heavens are not open there is a way you carry it i'm not talking of being sanctimonious that you realize that i'm sowing to someone who is richer than me i'm sowing to someone who is more blessed than me and he will take me that's why the bible says, my god paul speaking shall supply your needs according to his riches in glory every time a woman's barrenness is about to finish god will send a man who is higher than her and say give him food what is god doing the widow of Zarephath. see the shunammite woman understood this the moment she perceived he was a prophet of god he said quickly let us build a place and without controversy whatever level you want to get to there is a career of that anointing working in this earth the reason is we have not honored them because some of them are your roommates in class you go to class together but you do not know the difference hallelujah you have been castigating everybody who is married instead of sowing see let me tell you the truth i everybody i see every nice car that i see because i want to buy a car i just say lord thank you for this car if my friend buys a car today i will be the first person to provide fuel for that car i'm not a fool i know this principle are you listening to me you see why we are rich because we provide free bus transport for you i don't know the kinds of anointings that are here and i know that there are some anointings we do not have so we sow into your anointing by providing bus many of you are laughing and wondering why this ministry is increasing these are the laws are you listening to me every time i'm around a man of god when i went to dr akbami's church to minister it was an honor because he's a father in the land when i entered people were there looking at me oh this is the apostle joshua when i went in front of dr akbami i got down on both of my knees i don't know him he's not my spiritual father for some of you who have been misled and misguided with devilish doctrines And I greeted him and then I got up because without controversy the lesser is blessed of the greater are you listening to me many of you sit down and watch men of God on TV and you say Kai this man's realm herself is so bad you have not gotten to where he's getting to you have three members and you are criticizing him there are people who criticize me today and criticize us and never walk in the anointing i tell you you can listen to all my tapes the heaven will remain short that honor is a law are you listening to me look at the myriads of nigerians in abuja and lagos queuing for jobs their yard mate goes to a a lucrative office every day why not wake up early in the morning and polish his shoe and keep it for him you may not understand what you are doing but you are tapping into a law i tell you it will not take two weeks they will call you are you listening to me respect this principle i'm teaching you for your information let me give you a little secret about the prosperity of this ministry i'm sowing into the life of living faith i'm sowing into the life of kenneth copeland i'm sowing into the life of benny hin i'm sowing into the life of reinhard bonke i'm sowing into the life of kobus van rensburg i believe them when i got up i went to south africa i was fasting i was praying i didn't go to show that i'm going abroad i had serious business there he was a career of an anointing others were discussing and criticizing i said lord i know there is grace and i went there Smith Wigglesworth laid his hands on Lester Sumro. Are you listening to me? And Kobus was with Lester Sumro for one week and he laid his hands on me. When I went there, Kobus looked at me. He said, I want to connect you to the lineage of the generals. And he laid his hands on me three times. Sorry for all the people who carry every kind of rubbish news. It's not by age. If you understand the principle, you will rise. Are you listening to me? listen to me hear me my mother and my father laid their hands and blessed me for ministry and this is why i can never fail you don't know the hands and the anointings that are responsible for what you are seeing are you listening to me 
I respect the careers of this anointing. I saw into the lives of blessed people. Mike Mudok, one of my greatest financial mentors. I don't like him. I don't like him. He's a seed seed man. But he carries something I'm looking for. When he came to Koza, I couldn't I couldn't make it. I was streaming in my room and praying in tongues for six hours, for three, three hours every day, beginning to the end of that program. I prayed for the internet, what I would have paid for my hotel bills. And some of you just get up and say, how are these people getting the anointing? And all kinds of stories. Hallelujah. Rather than celebrate, when you don't celebrate an anointing, forget about walking in it. I will never allow a man who is greater than me do what I can do for him. I go to a shop to buy something and I see an elderly woman. I, I will over my dead body for that woman to pay that money if I can pay. He mustn't be a pastor. Hallelujah. You want to raise children. You see a woman that raised eight children. All of them are disciplined. There is an anointing. That woman can, you can tap into it. Hallelujah. I see ministries that represent the things I want. Even in the realms of prosperity, I couldn't understand the prosperity on Oedeko's life. I studied this man and read his books. I couldn't find the key. I said, Lord, what kind of thing is this guy? I mean, what is it? I need to see something there. And the Lord told me, one day you are going to sow into his life. The day the Lord told me I went, I went to Canaan land. Hallelujah. And I sowed into that anointing. I came out to enter the car and the Lord told me, come out. And I came out. He said, kneel down on that ground. I knelt down and I laid my hands. And the Lord said, from today, everywhere you go, the land will open for you. And people keep criticizing. We go to CGC, it's packed full with people. We come here, packed full, blue roof. See, when you see a man prospering, find out what law is being operated. It's God that oversees his laws. I can't go to a restaurant with somebody that carries something. See, before all my brothers entered into a relationship, when they entered into a relationship, I was concerned. Ask them, Valentine's Day, I was so into it. Many of you are there grumbling and shouting and making noise. My sister is not married. What of me? Don't these guys like me? And you see your roommate, who may not be as good looking as you look like, every time she's cooking where are you carrying this food i'm cooking i want to sow into an anointing you are laughing at her then you see one clean brother who come out with his prosperity and say she's the one you marry and you you see that god you are not fair let me tell you life will never change until you change it for those of you who are waiting for things to change are you listening to me i'm showing you a law without controversy the lesser is blessed of the greater hallelujah I spoke to the protocol because we are trusting God for our boss. I told them, they told me that RCF, um, I mean, they were charging us a stipend for the boss. I said, very good. Because I was looking for a way to sow into their life. I'm looking for a boss. We are looking for a boss as a ministry. What do we do? We find a ministry that has what we are looking for and sow into it. Many people sit in Zaria here. They are broke. They are poor. Their ministries are broke. But people are running from Abuja, running from everywhere. They come and catch the fire and sow into the anointing. I'm not talking of seed. It's the law of honor. Are you listening to me? Thank you, Jesus. If you believe this, go and tell your brothers and sisters who are looking for jobs and looking for this and looking for marriage and looking for all of these things nothing will change the bible says when god saw their faith faith can be seen is hope that cannot be seen many people have been doing hope what they call faith sometimes i sit down and i'm watching television and i watch benny him i watch kobus i watch all of these people and i'm kneeling down we took the leaders hear me and all the heads of department because commonwealth of zion assembly they have a level of prosperity and excellence that is touching you will be a wicked person to deny hallelujah other people were discussing who are these people self know this know that i told the leaders manasseh suggested it and i said quickly 
the heads of departments and the ministers we went and we lodged in an expensive hotel in abuja it wasn't because we wanted to waste money the lesser is blessed of the greater when we went there listen to me the head of department went to go and meet the head of department there and walked there the head of protocol went to go and meet them why will you be surprised that we are excellent and without controversy the lesser is blessed of the greater i'm showing you a key i promise you it will open any door every time i am in lack i find those who are prosperous quick quick with the remaining money i don't waste my time sitting i don't waste my time no no listen let me tell you something listen to me hi lord in john 21 the bible says peter said i want to show you something your skill can fail you are you listening to me it was a time of recession i was saying lord give me a word for this recession i've had many preachers and god showed me something do you know peter was a fisherman realize that there was a time jesus told him go and fish and take the mouth from the coin that means your potentials and your gift is supposed to bring prosperity however there are times it can fail what law do you engage in when it fails let me show you the bible says peter went to fish and found out that there was no fish suddenly there was no fish a fisherman who used to fish all the time there was no fish and the bible says when you went jesus saw them listen to what jesus tells them in john 21 he said children how many people is jesus older than among the disciples he said children it was a test of honor children have you caught any fish they said no he said cast your net that's you have passed the test they would have said children Peter said, I'm married. They killed all your age mates from two years and below. I'm not older than you with two years old. How can a man call them children? My mother started calling me her father. I promise you, her poultry and her business just expanded. Hey, could it be that you have been missing something? Could it be that your miracle has been passing you? And you have been praying and hitting keys in the spirit without knowing which door is opening when my mother came here that's why quickly before we said anything i did what i called her i said speak to this work without controversy when it was time for her to go back i packaged a dangerous seed and i went and met her i may be your son but this is not the issue of son now I tapped into that grace quickly. Many of you see careers of anointings that you want. And you just keep looking at them all the time. Mukhtar, his laundry services is doing very well. He's a leader. He finished serving from Engineering Students Fellowship. And he's very good. Let me tell you a little history about this guy. Are you listening to me? For one year, Mukhtar came and was, before he started his business, he was dry cleaning my suit for one year. One solid year as a seed. He knew what he was doing. When you see the worship team and all these people doing what they are doing, they are tapping into graces. There are many of you, you are, your job is to grumble and complain. There are many people that I honor and sow into their lives is not because they are nice people. I look at the weakness of others and get the gold in them. I'm interested in the anointing. When, let me tell you, when I'm watching a man that carries something, I can slap you if you come to, dis, to, to, to disturb me. I don't, I'm not the kind of person that is in church. Before you do it, oh, I'm seen. And you're not getting anything. I give my rapt attention. My spirit is open. I'm saying, Lord, the guy, the guy may be joking for 30 minutes. I'm tired of this joke. Show me this key. And you sit down there. There are times I play messages of Benny Hinn. I'm not listening to the message. I just want to saturate under the anointing. And I'm praying in tongues. I'm praying in tongues. I'm praying in tongues. For about one month, that was the song that, that was, it was his worship songs that I slept with all through the night. They will play all through the night. I'm just trying to show you that this is not a mistake. Do you know that if you honor people, final year students, we have started our, our meeting with you tomorrow this night. 
Many of you see the ministers. You just come because they are your colleagues. You just tap them. Ah, edgy alpha. I'm not saying you just lie down and lick people's leg. But I tell you the truth. You can sit down and tap into anointings. I never go and see a man that is higher than me empty handed. No matter what happens, even if it is 10 naira, I must put it in my pocket. And at the end of it, I will bless him. Are you listening to me? I want to show you that there are laws and there are principles that are working. I repented from castigating people and criticizing people. Any grace that I see, I humble myself. I say, Lord, you have empowered these people. Suddenly, sometimes I listen to the tapes once. Do you know, aside from last week's tape, there is no koinonia message I don't listen to. I can easily say it's my ministry. I download it. I don't ask the media to bring it. I want it to cost me something. I download it. And every time I'm prophesying, or the man of God is prophesying rather, I get down on my knees. God is my witness. I say, Lord, I believe your servant is about to speak a word. I believe the anointing he's carrying. I promise myself that for a long time, nobody will sow into this ministry more than me. It's not because it's my ministry. I believe in the anointing that is carried. Many of you come and you just sit down and look at people. You see the ushers. You see everybody. God is opening doors for them. You're just smiling and looking and complaining and ranting and shouting and doing all kinds of things. I tell you, friends, if you obey this law, there is nothing that will not work for you. Your father was driven out of the job and his brother is still working. That's the time for him to go and greet his brother. Go and greet his brother and say, ah, well done, sir. And when they get to filling station, the remaining 4,000 that is left, carry 2,000 inside and say, please get fuel. Insist that they use your money and sow into the anointing that is working. Do you believe this? Or many of you are still saying, is that all? Do you believe this? I tell you the truth. See, let me tell you. If I were some of you seated here, I promise you, I will never allow any anointing pass me by unnoticed. If I wake up in the morning blind, by evening my eyes would have opened. I will find everybody who is seen and clean their shoe. I would just say, I'm sitting with a rag and water, I'm blind. Everybody whose eyes is open, please come and pass. Let me wash your leg. When God wanted men, he sowed his seed into the earth. And Jesus gave birth to a harvest that is still happening till now. We are going to pray. I know we have taken time. But I'm showing you a mystery that will open every door for you. Find careers of your anointing. Whether it's, even if it's only once you meet them in your life. They may not be men of God. Some of them may not even be born again. Hallelujah. You sow into the anointings. Every seed that comes into my life, I divide it. And I begin to sow. The tithe of this ministry every week each and every week we are sowing it many of you have been giving but you have only been doing charity you have not been rising because you look and say ah god tells you package this seed go and sow it into joshua selman's life he said god for god forbid i'm seeing suits like me i'll go and sow and you see somebody stand with a plate outside and he's begging you and you go and throw 20 naira you'll be rewarded because you did charity but that wealthy place, you will not enter it. No way. It's not done that way. Are you listening to me? During miracle service, you are standing. Some of you are frowning and just looking. These people say, why are they always joking? Call my case. Instead of you to come and be praying and say, Lord, part of my prayer request, there is grace. There is grace to receive. You can honor a man even without him knowing and you receive that anointing. Go and see what koinonia messages are doing in Futmina. Go and see the kind, the rip, the miracles and the revival that is happening in Futmina. I, I, I wasn't even aware until someone started giving me stories. I tell you, people catching fire. 
but there are some of you who are sitting down here you hear prophecies that will come and you just laugh where i wonder where you think your miracle is coming from when paul was going to damascus and he fell the bible says god commanded ananias in other words he recognized he was a carrier of that glory and ananias said brother paul god sent me that i should lay my hands on you that your eyes be open and that you receive the baptism of the holy ghost and paul said yes i've seen it in a vision and he laid hands on him many of you come in every week you see prosperity you see excellence you feel god is calling you into ministry every time you see every man of god you come and talk and look and say ah jakes i saw you that day at the faculty and suddenly the door is closed you will secretly get his tape and listen to and you find out that the door is not opening you can't find that key are you learning something tonight graduates forget about that nonsense of trying to look for your uncle or auntie if i were you and we are going to talk tomorrow by 12 right here as soon as you finish go and find somebody that is working polish his shoe while you are polishing God is calling you into ministry you prepare or God told you you will marry a minister go and find a pastor William's wife is coming here every week every week you are seeing her after you finish you say ah give me five you just shake her and the door closes and you shake empty hands and somebody can come and say lord if i may but touch the hem of his garment that's how many of you keep sitting here people come from other states less than 30 minutes they have caught fire and caught an anointing are you getting blessed i'm not saying you should give me money i'm blessed you know that and without controversy the lesser is blessed of the greater every time you see people serving you and sowing into you and you are laughing say kai that means i'm a big man you are not wise you should turn quickly and start finding a way there is he that scattered and increased there is he that withholded more than his meat and tends to poverty i can't be a failure in life no way not when there is one career of an anointing hallelujah when Pastor Biodu was going to bring Dr. Miles Munro. Do you know what they did? What I mean, um, um, what's his name? The Mike Mudok. Do you know what they did? One month before he came, they got all his tapes and they made the choir to practice his songs. Say after me, honor. As soon as he was entering his hotel room, a grand piano was there playing the songs he wrote. He announced it on air that in all his life and ministry he has gone around the world. No ministry has honored him like this. The honorarium that they were supposed to give him, they doubled it times three and sold it into his life. There are people who have been in Abuja since 1991. 1991, they don't have their building. When he came into Abuja, he went and met the pastor with the largest church and greeted him. Many of you are there on campus. God called me into ministry. You are foolishly doing things. There are people who have run this race before you. You can't come and greet them. You see them, you just push them. I touched somebody and they fell down. It will tire you. See, now it's not, it's not like before that they tell somebody, no, no, you see, stay back and let, go, go, go and do ministry. Hallelujah. While well on campus, we were all already in ministry. I tell you, we were men of God. But I served in FCS till I finished. I was the prayer secretary, engineering students fellowship. We were already in ministry, doing great things. Jakes was the president of NACA. Ejimi was QT, QT, uh, uh, he was in QT. Hallelujah. Manasseh was in faculty of arts. He was prayer secretary. Bishop became the prayer secretary after me, right? And then he became the president of engineering students fellowship. Are you listening to me? 
We were ministry, but we knew the power of service and tapping into anointings that was higher than us. From there, I became the national prayer secretary of Conference of Nigerian Christian Engineering Students. Then we all were serving. Jakes became the president of some of the people who we got born again later became our leaders in fcs and we still told them yes sir we'll go to their father's church and preach and come and say yes sir to them but we're still saying yes sir because it was about office not person are you listening to me so why will you be surprised today that he and i will never lack people who are serving are you listening to me it's a law and it's a principle the difference between any two people in the kingdom Yes, we say it is grace. Yes, we say it is anointing. But remember the scripture says, grace and peace be multiplied to you through the knowledge. There is a kind of knowledge, not through any knowledge. There is an exact understanding that delivers exact results. You can know a dimension of God. It will never mean you will see everything. Through the knowledge. There is the knowledge that brings signs and wonders. There is the knowledge that brings victory in certain areas. There is the knowledge that brings prosperity and increase. There is the knowledge that brings honor and influence. There is the knowledge that multiplies the anointing. So your appetites must be stretched with God to access the knowledge that is responsible for the outcome you desire. Many of us know what we want. But we do not know what it takes to deliver the result. This is where the challenge is. If I call everyone at random here and I say, stand up, what do you want? Very few people will be in ignorance as to what they want. Someone will say, I want a child. Another person will say, I want to come out of poverty. Another person will say, I want a supernatural anointing upon my life. Another person will say, I want God to wipe my tears. Another song like our awesome worship team, Sam beautify my life another person will say lord take away shame and reproach from my life all these are possibilities that are within the context of the might of god but the key is there is the knowledge that will deliver that result you can have the knowledge that delivers to you the results to be free from barrenness but it will never prosper you you can have the knowledge that will give you a lot of money and financial prosperity but you will never carry the anointing to release supernatural possibilities to people you may never see the gift of the spirit work in your life it is important that we realize that light or the absence of it is the reason behind the challenges of many people gathered here tonight yes demon spirits yes principalities and powers but i've taught us here again and again that a stronghold is never a stronghold until there is a faulty mindset a stronghold is when spirits come and create fortification around a pattern of thinking and understanding it is that state that is capable of making the word of god of non-effect in the life of a man are we together now demons don't just veto you and act anyhow they thrive upon your ignorance jesus said satan cometh to me and does not find anything it is a possibility that satan comes meaning when satan comes his character is to search for what in your life reflects darkness because he is darkness so he finds an area of ignorance and that becomes his access point in your life no matter how much you are excelling in another area it is possible so this answers the question once and for all can a believer still be under the yoke of darkness absolutely yes absolutely yes on the strength of insufficient renewal in the in a dimension it will authorize the gates of hell to rubbish your life until light bails you out hallelujah first corinthians chapter 4 and verse 18 it has become a national anthem here by the way if you've not listened to the last two series that we've had i think that they are very phenomenal they are very epochal i challenge you especially for those of you um those of us online and those of us who are coming here for the first time please get it and listen are we together now 
spiritual intelligence and the mystery of exemption you have to listen to it hallelujah first corinthians did i do something wrong again four i think i wrote it down here let's look at it ephesians i'm sorry ephesians 4 18 it says having their understanding darkened having they are understanding darkened. Listen. Then it says being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. So although you are a possessor, remember our teaching, the epistle of John. This is the record. It's a testimony. It's a legal document that God has given us the way. That divine life. Then it says that life is in his son. So when you encounter the son, you have the life. But the Bible says ignorance can alienate you from the experience of the possibilities that come with that life. So I am a possessor of that life. But it is possible I can die SS or AS. I am a possessor of that life, but I can die barren. I am a possessor of that life and I can never rise in certain superior dimensions of the anointing. I am a possessor of that life. But that life is released through knowledge. Through knowledge. Through knowledge. Never forget this. There are many people who claim and boast that they are carrying the life of God. But the experience of their lives do not show that such a possibility exists within them. Knowledge. Knowledge. In fact, I love the way I think it's Isaiah 33. Please give us Isaiah 33. I hope I'm right. Um, Isaiah, it should be help me Holy Spirit. Isaiah 33 it should be 5 or 6 Isaiah 33 5 or 6 it says wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of your times that's right and wisdom and knowledge shall be what the stability when you find out that there is no dimension of stability in a man's life it is because there is no wisdom and there is no knowledge these two instruments in the spirit govern stability and establishment in the life of a man in the life of a people wisdom and knowledge Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6 the prophet was lamenting and it's a very interesting scripture because he starts saying my people my people so we're not talking of those alienated from the commonwealth of Israel my people he says are destroyed not because of Satan for lack of knowledge that means a believer can sustain an understanding and then alongside the grace that comes with that understanding and it will literally paralyze the possibilities of Satan within your life and within your vicinity there is such a reality in the spirit that a man can live free of the dominion of Satan and everything he represents hast thou considered my servant Job and Satan testified that I came around him and I could not break that hedge. He said, is it not because you have set a hedge? God did not only do it to Job. Job knew the secrets that would compel that hedge to be there. He says, in the days of my youth, when the secrets of the Lord was upon my tabernacle, that was the secret. Job knew what to do. Whilst his children went for party, he offered sacrifices in advance. Wisdom, understanding. He said, by me kings reign and princes decree justice. With me are riches, wealth and honor, yea, durable riches and righteousness. Brothers and sisters, listen to me. Let me tell you something. As powerful and mighty as God is, the ultimate key to confidence, the ultimate key to being mightily used by God, much more than just submitting to him, which is important, is that you must have a passion not for careless random spiritual knowledge not everything spiritual is useful for the dimensions you seek to enter i've given us an example if i go to the market and my goal is to make fry, fried rice if i see yam will i buy it is yam bad but it's not part of the ingredients required for what i desire if i'm passing around and i see very red palm oil very good one should i buy it well i don't know whether they make fried rice with palm oil but i don't think so so i pass it is that true now when you're joining the spirit 
become such that you are attracted by everything spiritual two things will happen to you number one you will be puffed up with knowledge that is random and cannot produce your results number two your pace will be slowed down you need to have a specific understanding in this season of my life i desire to rise in unction and grace and you limit yourself to the supply of understanding that is responsible for the delivery of that result there are books i've bought for up to two years i've not read them it's not spiritual carelessness the dealings of god with me does not require me to touch those materials now so they are there they are useful but not needed in my work now the times god will shift in that dimension then i will pick up those books knowledge very quickly before i pray for you i want to give you four areas that i believe every believer that wants to do mighty things through and in god in this season must be able to access write it down quickly number one in the beginning god any believer that wants to be mighty you want to walk in the anointing you must have a revelation of god you must know who god is you can know about me by reading my books but you have to meet me to know me and the bible tells us that jesus has come as the expression of the fullness of the image of god so as i study the life of jesus christ i have an understanding of who god is you see the bible is a compendium of god revealed in different dimensions so that as i study the bible and as i trust the presence of the holy spirit to reveal the reality of jesus to me certain things about god listen if you are coming for koinonia right now and someone stops you by the road and says apostle said koinonia will now hold in pz you're not going to listen to that person because that communication based on me that you know that communication is not consistent with how i will behave if there is a need to change venue we have a more intelligent system of communicating it is that true so because of your access to the knowledge of me you know what is not me is that true but if you are a visitor who is coming for the first time never seen me and someone stopped you and said look i think you need to reverse you will go in obedience but you are obeying a wrong information so it's not just obedience it has to be obedience to the right thing there are too many people who are obedient to wrong informations and then they say lord i'm obedient <clears throat> you must understand god and understanding jesus christ together with everything that redemption brings and together with every reality that comes today in christ this is the foundation for the victory of a believer you must be able to know who god is what jesus christ represented while he walked on the earth and what he means to you now and the quality of life we have discussed it what the bible calls eternal life remember i told you it's not eternal life everybody has eternal life everybody has everlasting life that rendition is the best of the translators eternal life is a possibility once you are born the parable of the rich fool and lazarus they all left this realm to another dimension of living and they were all alive could speak so everyone has eternal life and then zoe i told us let me just do a, a quick recap that zoe is not just a life superior to the human life because there are many lives that are superior to the human life money alone can create a possibility in your life where the quality of your life becomes higher than that of an average human being you don't have to be born again just that quality are we true divination can open you up to certain possibilities in the spirit where your life becomes higher in quality than that of a human life but it's not eternal life it was john that described to us he said this life is a derivative of an encounter with a person if for any reason you find out that you are living in a higher dimension of living above the normal human life but is outside of an encounter with a person your life is higher than a human life but it is not the way 
and this life is in his son he that hath the son hath that life you must know this because that light that enters you is what becomes your life that's what immunes you so you are able to manifest possibilities that are not privy to the average human being then you will know that it's possible to walk in health it's not just a, a, an issue of I won't be sick. Uh -uh. It's not just jacking yourself in empty confusion, confession. No. Then you will know that you are able to rise above situations and circumstances. Not just by empty confession but an experience that is now your reality. Number two, quickly. The second dimension of knowledge that I think we need is the knowledge of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit very few people truly know the Holy Spirit many people know about him there are all kinds of theological exegesis about him you must know his person and you must know his ministry Jesus took out time in John 14 15 16 to introduce us to this personality called the Holy Spirit and the Bible makes us to understand that the success of Jesus was entirely because of the Spirit of God. It's impossible to be mighty upon the earth, ignoring Him. Receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit is not knowing the Holy Spirit. Praying in tongues is not knowing the Holy Spirit. Walking in miracles is not knowing the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a person. You can know Him, you can understand His ministry. What a joy. Your life will be a wonder when you know the Holy Spirit. Are we together? You must know the Holy Spirit. Especially if you are in ministry. Listen. I have learned by the grace of God and by experience that the absence of certain things can never be replaced by certain others. Oratory will never replace the absence of the Holy Spirit. Are we together? Going to school and reading well will never replace the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Kneeling down and asking people to give you impartation will never replace a personal press for an encounter and a knowledge with the Holy Spirit. Miracles, signs and wonders will never replace him. You can fake power. You can't fake his presence. Are we together? You must press to know the Holy Spirit. I study God's generals. And every time I have an opportunity to look at materials that make reference to them. One thing was common between them. Regardless of their limitations and their temperaments. They really knew him. And their knowledge of the spirit brought accuracy in their lives. They did mighty things that we are blessed. You must know the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not a personality to be known by men of God and miracle workers. No. The Holy Spirit is not a personality that should be known by apostles, prophets, teachers, evangelists, pastors. No. The Holy Spirit is the key to living. And when he, the spirit of truth is come, the Bible says he will guide you into all truth. He will guide you. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit. Can you pray one minute and say, Holy Spirit, reveal yourself to me. Reveal yourself to me. Reveal yourself to me. Oh God, you are my God. And I will ever praise you. Oh God, you are my God. And I will ever serve you. Oh God, you are my God. And I will ever follow. Lord, I will seek you in the morning. I will learn to walk in your ways. Four steps by 
my step, you lead me, and I will follow you all of my way. That's where we are bankrupt, no direction. We guess our lives and do everything, and your lifetime is too small for error. Your lifetime is too small for repeated mistakes. There must be a system in God for accuracy, in ministry, in family life, your vocation, whatever it is. You cannot live your life just based on science. There is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but there is a personality. For step by step, you lead me. I admit I'm ignorant, but step by step, you lead me and I will follow that's my part I won't be too ignorant I won't be too arrogant when he leads me I follow maybe a stupid instruction but I'm too young to question him he's the spirit of the father I trust him you trusted a lecturer who is less than 20 years older than you you trusted a man who called himself your father not more than 30 years older than you and here comes one who was in the beginning the first personality of the trinity revealed and he comes to hold your hands and he said look i took a very frail man called moses and i guided him brothers and sisters this thing is not just skill and talent alone is the foolishness of submission to a personality not a power not just an influence a person some of us have foolishly followed him for years with stupid instructions admitting our ignorance in the the midst of a proud world oh god you are my god just the same and i will never praise you oh god you are my god and i will ever praise you i will seek you in the morning i will seek you in the morning and i will learn to walk in your way for step by step you lead me and i will follow all of my days from tonight step by step you lead you and i will follow you all of my days the holy spirit was with was with god when they were discussing your destiny it's a foolish thing to not need him in building it no if i was responsible for designing a curriculum and you ignore me when it comes to execution it is called pride i was in my mother's womb when he designed me i called you i ordained you so you walk with me and say holy spirit i don't know my way I don't know my way many people claim is their power and their might many people claim I understand church planting many people claim I know how to be a man of God but can you humble yourself and press for the knowledge of him the knowledge of the Holy Spirit will require time and it will require submission one thing I know about the Holy Ghost is he hates arrogance the Holy Spirit hates arrogance when he comes to you you are not colleagues he's not in you as a tenant he's in you as the landlord what will happen tonight brothers and sisters is credited to him it is him that reveals jesus here look how many of us have wasted time listen to me i'm speaking to you there are many of us seated here you would have been working in your destiny already five years from now but this stubbornness of, of not listening to him oh holy I, 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 all these church things no he told you go and serve in church by now certain things in your life would have gone ah. we wait on you Lord we wait on you I wait on you Lord we wait 
I wait on you, Lord, I wait on you, I wait on you, Lord, I wait on you. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. That's what I've done with my life. That's what we've done with Koinonia. Fill this temple with, with your, your presence. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Fill this temple with your friends. We wait on you. Lord, we wait on you. To open up my destiny. You are the only one who can open up my destiny. me at whatever level you are just walk with him you may have no iota of unction right now forget about anointing be foolish enough to hold him let him lead you let others go just walk with him you may be behind but brothers and sisters there is an unction he will put something upon your life that will shake the nations and take away the boastings of men God is never too slow with men never too slow if he's the one that kept you know you are faster faster than anything you can imagine faster there are many arrogant pastors claiming that they want to do ministry but they ignore him they like human connection but they leave him alone I will never forget years ago the spirit of God will keep me and said, son, never try to rush anything. Just walk with me. Just walk with me. Like he's telling someone now, don't rush your life. I know you think everybody has gone ahead of you. Don't rush that marriage. Don't rush that thing. Walk with him. One day with him will cover 10 years of mistakes. Walk with him. Apostle, I have no job. Just walk with him. Just walk with him. If you were working five years ago, all your salary put together would not be more than six million. Walk with him. Nice. The Holy Spirit. Fortunately, from next week, I'm starting a series. The Lord has allowed me to take a series. We are taking a series on the Holy Spirit. A complete I will share with you very deep things that I've not shared with many people. The Holy Spirit. You ignore him as a businessman because you believe you are intelligent. I went to Harvard. You ignore him as a father because you think I'm not a small child. Hi. Will I ever be able to leave him? I know you are looking at me is because I'm the I'm the part of the deal that is visible but behind me I'm not too smart to produce the results that you see I'm not ashamed of it oh. there is one who is mighty mighty there is an infinite wisdom behind everything you see if it is the Lord's doing remember then it must be marvelous if it's a man's doing then it is natural scientific but the moment it becomes Marvelous, it is the Lord's doing. You are marvelous, yeah. You are marvelous, yeah. Hey. You are marvelous, yeah. You are marvelous, yeah. You are marvelous. Value is defined by scarcity.
when you study developmental economics value is defined by what scarcity the ability of a thing to not be available everywhere the most scarce thing is whatever cannot be found on earth that's what he gives you as your reward anointing is not something you get just by fasting anointing is God's reward for trusting him for working with me I give you something that money cannot buy for working with me I give you something that builds you out of shame and inferiority I know you came from a background where nobody knew you and you were foolish enough to work with me then I give you an unction they may criticize you but you don't deny proofs brothers and sisters no sir I'm trusting that God will make someone's life marvelous the key listen the key is not running around the key is staying Martha you are worried and offended about many things but one thing is needful oh God I should have had five children now don't you know he can give you one child that is like a nation oh God I've been crying about that job when we talk about intimacy with God many busy people think it's a waste of time no 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 look I teach us some no no if I followed that route I would have been a failure today a big failure not ashamed you are the power in me you are the fire at work in me you are my ever present helper Holy Spirit I... how do you stand and look at someone with a growth and take away that growth just like that how do you look at someone who is dead and bring the person back to life there are people here now with situations that doctors have written you off even a charm cannot solve it you need a commodity that is not available in the earth i told you the anointing does not make the difference the anointing is the difference in a few minutes from now 10 years problems will just leave just like that no 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 that's what happens when you value him that's what happens that's what happens listen when you honor a man of god you don't just honor a body you honor the sacrifice the sacrifice of alignment that has caused that man to be able to hold certain dimensions of possibility listen to me all men are not equal no sir it's, it's a very harsh statement but it's the truth we are equal in Christ but our sacrifices and the election of grace has separated men to cadres based on the possibilities they can host ignoring that reality will be to the doom of a man the Holy Spirit we are going to begin to pray but I, I, I just four things the Holy Spirit you don't know him you are in trouble you will be faced by too many things that your age cannot solve you didn't study everything you had a degree in an area having a degree in engineering or in medicine is not having a degree in wisdom no sir that information is too small to define the quality of your life ministry you need him you want to succeed in life you don't just need information you need a person hallelujah holy spirit it's grace and glory i trust that god will initiate people into that dimension of grace of intimacy with the holy spirit hallelujah yes the holy spirit is speaking to me and he's saying there are seven people here right now that he wants to call like a call into intimacy seven people 
Seven people. Seven people. Salabrandis Kalam. Sabraske Lepra Call your people, oh God. It's an initiation into a dimension of intimacy. The sister outside, for he will be real to you. Real to you by his spirit. This is not an issue of jamboree. It's not an issue of feeling anointed. It's working with a person. It will make your life a wonder. A wonder. A wonder. He will make your life a wonder. He will not just give you anointing. He will walk with you. Walk with you. So you become an effulgence of that grace. Then you can say that which we have seen. That which we have heard. That which our hands have handled. Thank you, oh my Father, for giving me your son and leaving your spirit in your work in my life is done. I thank you. Oh, my Father, for giving me your Son and leave your Spirit in your word on earth. Please sit down if you can. The third thing that you must know is you must understand the mysteries and the principles of the kingdom. Please, I want you to be very sensitive. We'll soon arise to pray. Sensitive. Ah, I just saw something jumping out of a lady. Jumping out of a lake. Let it be the end of it. Let it be the end of it. Let it be the end of it. Forever faithful towards me. Will always provide for me. Praise His mercy towards me. Praise Your way. allow the Holy Spirit flow something is happening now the Lord is showing me a map you know this happens and I'm seeing Southern Kaduna Southern Kaduna right now the anointing is touching Southern Kaduna people Southern Kaduna this is what I see in the spirit Southern Kaduna Southern Kaduna this is what I see in the spirit you're from that place an unction an unction I see a map in the spirit, Southern Kaduna. Let the hand of God step into that dimension. It's not a miracle, it's a sign and wonder. It's a demonstration of a dimension of the spirit. Everyone from Southern Kaduna comes under the influence of this grace. Southern Kaduna. Shabrakatos kelabrande katai. Lekatekos sotopadia. Lift them, oh God. I hear my spirit lifting. Lifting, lifting. He's raising you. 
raising you by his spirit raising you there is an unction that makes this possible raising you by his spirit I hope I'll be able to finish this the mysteries of the kingdom that's the third thing that you must seek to know not just the word of God not just Rema the mysteries there is a lady in overflow three one is here two is the one by the road three is the one by the empty land there is a lady overflow three the anointing of the Holy Spirit is coming upon her please I want I want her to come overflow three I'm seeing like an arrow right from this building right down there please sit down let's hurry up so that we can do a quick walk there are so many people you must access the mysteries of the kingdom everybody say mysteries a mystery is a secret code of operation the kingdom of God operates based on systems and you see these mysteries contain in them the revelations of God the revelations of God alongside the dimensions of his power I've taught us here that there are two dimensions of God's power the first dimension of God's power is enshrined in mysteries and principles the second dimension of God's power is enshrined in a relationship two dimensions of God's power so you don't have to be born again to experience the first dimension the moment a principle is consistent with the character of God it will release a dimension of the power of God like tithing like sowing and reaping like being responsible like mentorship all of these are principles in the kingdom that are backed up by God's own character you must access the principles of the kingdom therein lies the key to your dominion it is a terrible thing to be in the face of life and not know what to do you must know what to engage for the outcomes you desire Can you tell me you understand the mystery that governs restoration? You know restoration is a possibility in the kingdom. But what is the code of operation that is responsible for releasing that dimension of possibility? Because the Bible lets us know that both the years and even substances that a man loses can come back. But do you understand that there is a system in the kingdom that can make that possible? Are we together? Do you understand that there is a system in the kingdom that can make a sick person healthy? Yes, you know that divine healing is a possibility. But what controls it? Laying on of hands? No. No. Laying on of hands is just a channel. The inner workings is the spiritual understanding that backs that. Are we together now? You have to understand the power of God is released through light. Remember the scripture Habakkuk. There was the hiding place of his power. Are we together? When you understand that, you don't have to lay hands on men to heal them. It doesn't even have to be a miracle service. The very understanding you have will respond to a man's need the same way if i stand with you and i have say tuberculosis you're a doctor doctor if i have tuberculosis and you stand near me must i believe in you to receive it no listen to me carefully are we together now i'm standing close to you it vetoes whether i agree with you i can even be insulting you but that's none of the business of the tuberculosis once there is proximity it will enter you you will live angry but you must receive it so if i can transfer sickness why can i not transfer health are you seeing that now that means i can stand close to you and transfer something from me to you life being the light of men you see that that's the concept of whatsoever is born of God. Not whosoever, whatsoever is born of God can 
overcome not by jacking yourself an understanding grants you access to that dimension in the spirit where you can walk in it so you can come with a challenge you can come with a sickness like some of you are here now trusting God all kinds of impossible situations they've told you it cannot be solved they are right based on their understanding this is a doctor they are not wrong based on their understanding but God's God's manifold wisdom introduces possibilities you see he says with God with God watch this I've taught you alone it is impossible but with God with God alone I cannot call but with my phone with in partnership with God all things all things all things are possible I want you to look at the situation you came here with for the last time tonight because in the name of the Lord God of heaven it will go hmm. my assignment tonight is to bring it face to face with the power that created the universe not the power that governs Nigeria not the power that governs UN the power that created the heavens and the earth for he upholds all things by the word of his power number three that's it there mysteries so number one you must know God number two that's redemption and everything that concerns God in the person of Jesus number two you must understand the ministry of the Holy Spirit the third thing you must have access to the word you must crave for accurate understanding number four this is a mystery I believe that has been known by very few and I truly believe with all my heart that is one of the things that God has anointed me to reveal is the mystery of the body the fourth thing you must know if you want to excel is you must understand the mystery of the body of Christ this strategy called the body of Christ the body of Christ is not just people the body of Christ many people say the body of Christ is not just a church there are people the body of Christ is not people the body of Christ is a strategy the only strategy capable of birthing the purposes of God is called Ecclesia the body of Christ the body of Christ is not a people it's a strategy that's why he said I will build it I will build it he didn't say I will make it I will build it like a formula like a plan and I will build it in such a way that it will be so formidable the gates of hell will not prevail against it there is a formation that the body of Christ is built it is so formidable the gate of hell can only touch members not the body the body was built by a system that cannot be touched by the gate of hell are we together never forget this many people have been robbed of the full dimension of the power of God first Corinthians 11 verse 30 remember for this cause many are weak many are sickly it is say for these causes there is only one reason why people are not able to rise to represent the fullness of God he said for this cause many are weak limited for this cause many are sickly and for this cause many sleep when was the last time you went for funeral and they told you somebody died because he did not discern the body that's what killed him please pay attention get my teachings discerning the body that whole series you have to listen if you are in ministry here or you are a church leader a deacon you have to listen to it if not you will never rise a body has thou prepared for me it was prepared to be used a formidable strategy that beats hell hands down it's called the body of Christ everything is available in the body listen carefully so if it is not available in your life it is available in the body you have to learn that any possibility my life is not manifesting does not define the possibility of God it is only the possibility of my experience but that reality is available are we together now yes 
son of man can these bones live and Ezekiel said this is not a possibility within my frame of reality he says let me show you the body the body this body is a mystery it was built with a formula Christ being the chief cornerstone immediately after Christ two strange ministries the apostolic and the prophetic then the building rises you must follow that formula to be formidable it is the building of the body so when you see a man telling you you don't need any man in your life don't depend on any man it's only God they are sincere in that they are trying to balance human worship but that's a destructive revelation that will kill you because please listen to my message I'm just doing a quick recap because I'm telling you the things to study we'll begin to pray listen carefully I told you that there are mantles and there are systems remember the teaching yes a system represents a covenant with God that releases a dimension of his possibility within the dispensation of that civilization it's called a system so in every dispensation there is a way and manner God wants to be known and the way he advances that knowledge of him is through covenant your relationship with God your spiritual growth is based on relationship but kingdom advancement is based on covenant so when God wants to release a dimension of him to a generation he finds a man listen he enters a covenant with that man that for as long as that man is alive he represents the spiritual system for releasing that possibility to that dispensation no one alive in that dispensation will taste of that dimension of God without believing or in alignment to that system this is how the kingdom is Abraham represents the system of the blessing the journey of a believer's blessing starts from him system are we together now Elijah represents God's system of purifying and preparing men for revival Elijah is not a man Elijah is a system I've taught you this the first manifestation of the spirit of Elijah was seen in Noah Elijah always precedes the great and terrible day of the Lord the moment there is a visitation upon a people Elijah must come that's why Elijah is still alive God's apostolic and prophetic system that prepares men for revival for the move of God is called Elijah is a system the man Elijah died he's simply a man named after the system the system continues the Antichrist is a system not just a person you see that Peter a system that represents faith systems on earth today there are men who are not just human beings but systems when you trace the ministry of the Holy Spirit it can start from anywhere you choose upon the earth today right now it will end with Benny Hinn. you see that Benny Hinn is not carrying a mantle he's a system he represents that possibility no one will enter into the healing ministry without honoring what he represents to the body this is called the mystery of discerning the body Kenneth Copeland today represents God's system of faith and prosperity start from any point in the world you will start moving from mantle to mantle grace to grace and it will land back in him there are many systems like that you will never get this through prayer and fasting no matter how you pray God will lead you to those people he will give you encounters but he will lead you there is a system I have provided it is your alignment with that system that will produce those possibilities how much of the body do you know imagine what would have happened into your life now if you could discern the body discerning the body is different from destiny helpers destiny helpers are not systems destiny helpers they may not even be born again they are just people that God anoints to help you get to your destiny there are bodies terrestrial and there are bodies celestial he says even among the stars one different from another in glory not in shape in glory hallelujah praise the lord 
if you had discernment for the body you probably would have been healed since if you had discernment for the body you probably would have been blessed since many people want to be rich but they criticize those who represent the systems that deliver that possibility there is no amount of prayer and fasting that will bring you into that possibility because when you scorn the grace that represents that reality you authorize that door to close it only opens to honor not even seats honor if your seat sowing is a communication of that honor then it opens are you seeing that now i can't criticize papa Ia deboy and bishop oyedeko and one crowds and multitudes is impossible carry posters everywhere it will not happen there is a system this is not publicity it's a spiritual reality so in honor of what they represent i am authorized to access that reality that's why you are here tonight let me tell you something listen carefully you see this thing you call koinonia koinonia is not a ministry koinonia is a system you have to believe this it's a system it's not a movement it's not a fellowship it's not a group it's a system it's a system that has become a portal to release certain possibilities of God I, I want you to be very hopeful so that when you come you don't have to be afraid there is something about the atmosphere so no matter how far you are you have come to Mount Zion certain things happen this is not just some human bragging a man of God trying to shine his ministry no tonight you are standing face to face with possibilities that are contained in God please listen to me you are standing face to face with a reality that you now possess that can change your ministry your business your family is standing face to face with a challenge and what you are about to watch within the next few minutes is what I call the dominion power of light over darkness the invincibility of the wisdom and the might and the power of God over darkness it will happen at the speed of light converting your prayer request to a testimony it's not trying to believe a reality here and now hello him Adonai thy kingdom come thy will be done hello him Adonai thy kingdom come thy will be done hello him
Jesus, I believe your power is here. Let your power give me a testimony. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Let it end every captivity by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Let it break every burden in my life. Hallelujah. Keep standing, everyone. I want to make an altar call quickly. Right now, everyone stand. There are people here, overflow one, two, three, following us online in this place right now. The Bible says this life is in his son. You don't hear about the son and receive life. You meet the son. There are people standing here, men and women scattered around. You are a pastor, leader, deacon, gentleman, lady, old, young, rich, poor, regardless of your status. Jesus said, ye must be born again. There are people here who have not met Jesus. We have to do this very fast because there will be such an outpouring of the Holy Spirit in this place. You are here inside and outside. You have heard what I said. And whilst I was speaking, the Spirit of God, the one we so honor, was beginning to minister to you that you must make your ways right with God and then you've been here and for some reason you've been one leg in and one leg out loved God was on fire but different things happened somewhere around your life and you're here probably standing inside and outside and wondering man of God can I join them most welcome I want to count one to five and um, now this is how we do it I want you to come the first sets of people can come out when they come and here is full then all the others that come will just stand at their various overflows just close to your projector but I want to count one to five and I want you to run like there's fire on the mountain right now one quickly quickly run to Jesus from the depth of your heart you can keep standing you don't have to lie down or kneel down God bless you you don't have to kneel down, madam. You can stand. Quickly. Two. Don't think about it. Run to Jesus. And this life is in his son. And this life is in his son. And this life is in his son. Man of God, I'm not sure whether I'm born again or not. Join them quickly. Join them quickly. I remember coming out for altar call one day but right now I'm not sure no if you are not sure you have to come out when a woman is pregnant she knows you are not sure join them something is wrong with what happened to you three are you coming apostle I'm trying to come out but my neighbor is stopping me we rebuke that spirit trying to stop you come out come to Jesus Jesus said, if you are ashamed of me before men, I will be ashamed of you before my father. Let this be the beginning of the miracle service for you. I think we have enough people inside now. Every other person that comes, just direct them to their various overflows outside. Those coming from outside, you can wait there now. Every moment, I'm away. Lord, have your way. Lord, have your way in me. Hallelujah. Madam, look at me. You, you love Jesus Christ? Come. I'm seeing you. You are not working well. What's wrong with you? What's wrong with her? Who brought her? Because I looked at you and I saw you limping and then I saw in the realm of the spirit severe pain. Come. What's wrong with you? From where are you? Program. So she now told me that I should come and attend the program. So For I have diabetes and also I my back pain here from the back here down to my leg. Everything. Yes. I'm feeling the pain very well. 
that is why she asked me to come and do the program with you people here. So that is why I came here. Mommy, look at me. Every one of them, you heard what I said? Everyone will leave you here and you'll go back to Abuja. Amen. Amen. You believe that? Yes, ma'am. Of course, if it doesn't work, your sister will not ask you to come. Hallelujah. I'm going to lead you people to pray. Join them to pray. We're going to pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ and all that devil will go. The ultimate cure is not the prayer for healing. The ultimate cure is Jesus. A man was brought to Jesus crippled and he says, Thy sins be forgiven. And people say, Ah, what is this? And Jesus said, Which is easier? Hi! That means to be healed is easier than to be saved. So it's not as easy. It's not just recitation. Are we together? Mama, I'll pray for you. Go back and join them. Those of you standing here, the overflow, lift your right hand and sincerely, you are not reciting a point. From the depth of your heart, I want you to say this after me. Say, Lord Jesus. You know some of you are crying, but don't worry. Jesus sees your tears. Say, Lord Jesus. I love you. And I believe in you. I believe that you are the son of God I believe that you died for me you shed your blood for me you rose again for me and tonight I receive your life I receive your grace I receive your spirit I declare that I'm born again I'm a child of God in the name of Jesus victory is given to me over sin over the flesh and over the world in Jesus name please keep your hands lifted I pray for you in the name of Jesus Christ the power of sin the power of the flesh and the world over you is broken right now I declare your sins forgiven I declare that the life of God is at work in you beginning from today the Lord transforms your life by his spirit in the name of Jesus Christ now I want you to do something for me very quickly please cooperate with all the people um, whether outside any of the overflows there is a gentleman waving his hand some um, of the uh, ushers there I want you to just follow them quietly and then give them your correct details very quickly this is so that we'll follow you up and then we'll get to see you so do that very very quickly very quickly madam I will pray for you you go and write your name and come back While we are waiting for them, please make sure we are going to be very fast. You see that our time is gone. So it's going to be a very quick walk. Very quick walk. We are going straight to the business of the night. And I want you to believe it doesn't take time. It only takes God. It doesn't take time. It only takes God. Very, very quickly. Very, very quickly. We are going to trust the Lord to... Please ushers coordinate them very quickly and uh, let's have them back because we want to pray now are we together everyone say after me in the name of jesus please be serious in the name of jesus i decree and i declare that every spirit every force every influence standing against god's word over my life i declare that you are under judgment tonight. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Lift your voice and pray, everyone. Shala braskada baladia. Yes, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are always spirits behind the tragedies of men. Whether or not you know, it is there. And until those influences are taken out of your life, victory is far from your reach. Are we together? Number two, I want you to decree and declare that the fire of God must fall upon every challenge you came here with. Say, Lord, visit it one by one. 
until there is total victory don't let the challenge don't let the challenge limit you take your eyes away from it and pray Are you praying inside and outside? Thank you, Jesus. Who can stand against the Lord? No one can. No one will. Who can stand against our King? No one can, no one will. Oh, 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 oh. Victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Him. Sing it one more time. Oh, oh, oh. Lift your hands everyone just lift your hands and be silent such a strong anointing in this place tonight lift your hands and just be silent please i'm seeing two numbers five and one and the lord is saying there are 51 people here 51 people he's bringing massive deliverance to their families I want you to bring them out 51 people don't shout don't do nothing just keep your hands the Lord is asking me to stretch my hands and the power of God that unction for deliverance will move like wildfire all through the overflows right now I stretch my hands in the name of the Lord God whose I am and whom I serve right now I release the ministry of angels Mighty deliverance right now. Bring them out. Shalabrakataya. Break it to Shubrataka Labraska Labriana. Shabraskata Brakatele Katia Labash. So break it Ali Braska Bariata. Embreko to Shoto Pareketa. The fire of God is visiting individuals for their families. I see fire burning. That's what I'm seeing. Bring them out. Just keep your hands lifted. The angel of his presence moving inside and outside. Moving inside and outside. Please quickly, let's have them. Overflow one. I see a strange activity of angels. Strange deliverance. Shigala para koto soto balada. You reign, you ancient Zion's king. Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty in God. You reign, you ancient Zion's king. Kadosh, Kadosh, you are mighty on your throne. Seketela kata. Keep your hands lifted. Malekete pekete la kaya. Ay 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 ay. Mighty hunger. You ain't. You ain't Shenza Young's king. Kadosh. Kadosh. Help that lady please. You are mighty hunger. Break forth. Down fountains of the deep. And we had us keep your hands lifted. I'm seeing snakes, that's what I'm seeing, just flying up. Snakes, I'm seeing many ladies being delivered from this influence right now. I stretch my hands in the name of Jesus. 
Mateketa, Lekete Brakata. I put the word of God upon this prophecy. In the name of Jesus, I release upon it the power to perform. Shakatakata, those influences. In the name of Jesus, I release judgment, 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 judgment upon every strange influence limiting the life of God's people. Break forth down fountains of the deep and weep and weep and weep that you reign, you reign, you reign, you reign. Hallelujah. Now lift your hands. Jesus, I'm seeing gates, gates with chains. One shout is what will bring that gate down. Are you ready? Just a shout of the name of Jesus. One, two, three. I open those gates. Kato Shobarata. Legete Kete. Sobes Kotai. Embre Kete Kete Leka. Gates be open. Gates of limitations. Gates of stagnation be open. Of the spirit, gates be open, effort be open. The gates must open tonight. Is a miracle service. I prophesied the two lift gate be open the two leaf gate many of you don't know what is happening in the realm of the spirit i tell you i see gates gates of destinies gates of possibilities that are being held by witchcraft gates over families no progress no results i come tonight with an apostolic and a prophetic anointing gates be open gates be open Gates be open. Gates be open. Listen. Listen to me. A gate is what gives a man access. Access into a place. Access out of a place. The Bible says to open the doors of prison. There are men who are moving. But they are under prison there's nothing hear me you may be here listening to me there's nothing you do that works no matter how you try seek advice it will not work no matter what you do you are not bad you are not lazy but there is a spirit but right now lift your hands in the name of Jesus one more time I come against the spirit that stand as gatekeepers over the victory of people over the life of people at the count of three i want you to shout that name the name that is a key that opens the gate one two three i open it i open it i open it online outside i command it to open i command it to open Locked by ancestry, locked by divination, locked by necromancy and projection, manipulation of the constellations. I command in the name of He that holds the key of David, I command that door be open, that no power can shut. Be sensitive tonight the spirit of god is moving one of the ushers one of the ushers you are an usher but the unction of the spirit help her visiting your family visiting your family 
Alléluia. Alléluia. I'm seeing a lady quickly. There's no time to speak. Our time is gone. We have to pray for the sick. But I'm seeing a lady. You have two sisters. Two of them are barren. They are married, no children. Please, where are you? It's part of your prayer request. You are wearing a black dress. You are the one. Come. Hello, Himatona. Thy kingdom come. I will be blessed. Ah, there's witchcraft in your family. Look at me. Come. You are a great lady, but there is terrible witchcraft in your family. There is a lady. Again, the Lord is opening my eyes. I don't know why this happens. I'm seeing a map. Benway. Benway. Benway people get ready. Benway. 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 I see Benway. And the Lord says, stretch your hands and bring deliverance to men in Benway. I stretch my hands right now. The anointing of the Spirit. Visiting people. Benway. 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 By the Spirit of God. By the Spirit of God. Hear me. And I'm hearing in my spirit, break the covenant of motherhood. I don't know what this means, but this is something that has to do with a covenant involving women. I arrest it right now in the name of Jesus. I see fire dropping right now. People from Benway, you are from Benway, you come under this influence. Please help that. Yes. Benway, Benway, the spirit of the living God, the spirit of the living God. Traveling to Benway, breaking covenant. I speak to the soil of that land. Release the destinies tied with you. Listen, what I'm seeing is not good. The Lord is taking me to a vision, and I'm standing and I'm seeing black ropes around trees. This is Otuko, black ropes tied around trees. And the Lord tells me that the destiny of men were tied to those trees. In the name of Jesus Christ, lift your hands. At the count of three, may the fire that the God of Elijah commanded, I command it right now upon every shrine, every activity of darkness. In the name of Jesus, let it come upon you now. Let it come upon you now. Let it come upon you now. Hallelujah. The supernatural I've taught you operates only in partnership with five elements. Listen. Without one or more of these elements, the supernatural cannot find expression. Guy, I'm seeing a wild, this is a serpent. I'm looking at this person and I'm not seeing a human being again. I'm seeing a serpent. I stretch my hands. The Bible says, for the light shines in darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. Now listen carefully. Five elements of the supernatural. Number one, is light the supernatural cannot find expression until it can use the medium of light number two the air sound the supernatural cannot find expression until there is a medium of sound number three the earth the earth is a universal point of contact every living thing makes contact with it number three are we together number four water the mystery that bears witness water is not an entity water is history Water is a memory bank of the realm of the spirit. Contained within it are more mysteries than we understand. Number five, fire. A mystery entity that does not run away from anything and yet consumes everything. Purifies and destroys. Can make and kill. The only personality with the quality of fire is God. Can make a life and destroy. It would destroy another thing and in it lift another thing. Purify gold and destroy the impurities. 
I want us to use one of the elements of the supernatural. Because everyone is standing on the ground. I want to pray for you. The Lord is asking me to break delay. Please just follow me. We are coming to the sick people. But just follow me tonight. Let's walk circumspectly. I'm seeing people whose feet have been tied down. They cannot move. You are here. No matter what you do, there is no progress. This is the story of your family. Look at me. The Lord wants to visit you first, even before your family. Your two sisters, they are married. No child. Are you married? You are not married. We have to pray. I don't know if you believe what I'm telling you, but God is raising you to be a savior in your family. Believe this thing, no. You may not look like it, but it is the spirit of Deborah. But first and foremost, you must be delivered first. God is not finished with her. I command that devil, go. There is no hiding in his presence. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hold my hands, my dear. In the name of Jesus, the Lord God whom I serve, I command the reign of witchcraft as I hold you right now. Over your sisters, over your life and over your family, I command them to be broken right now. I release upon you grace for restoration. In the name of Jesus. And I pray for you that grace of Deborah that causes women to rise with the strength of men. I release that grace upon you. I want you to go and tell your sisters the Lord brings a visitation to them. Even as he did to Hannah at Shiloh, the Lord comes for them with strange visitations. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now all those under the anointing, I command the spirits. Any spirit that has been located by God must leave the victims. Therefore in the name of Jesus and at the count of three, you know my voice. I represent his majesty. At the count of three, you must let them go now and forever. One, two, three, be gone. Go! Out of their lives, destinies, now and forever. Out of their lives, out of their destinies, I prophesy recovery. I prophesy recovery. I prophesy recovery. For when a thief is caught, he's made to pay back tenfold. I command recovery in the name of Jesus. Let them go. There is no hiding, for his light shines upon you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, if there is any project you are involved in, lift your hand. Any project, business project, building project, please just lift your hands. Before I pray, we pray the prayer that will release speed. Projects. Ah. I'm standing and I'm seeing an angel of the Lord walking across this place and I'm standing here and he's saying I should stretch my hands here there is a visitation that is coming for the people here therefore I stretch my hands Lord your will be done I don't know those who you are bringing perfection to them right now in the name of Jesus I release that unction and that grace everyone within this vicinity let there be supernatural deliverances and supernatural miracles help them in the name of Jesus Christ in the mighty name of Jesus Christ in the mighty name of Jesus Christ now everyone is standing I want to pray for you please listen there is such a thing as advancement in a man's life it's not a doctrine it's an experience where a man can make progress spiritually financially business wise if you are in a position for a long time it's a sign that something is wrong are we together it says ye have come past this mountain long enough then it tells you the formula the door is in the north it said turn northwards turn northwards you have come past this mountain long enough I want you to stand on the ground I see physical fire rising and sweeping consuming people's feet some of you as this is happening you will hear the sounds of physical chains literally physical chains this will happen I want us to shout the name of Jesus three times that's what the Holy Ghost is telling me 
I will lead you and you will shout it. The third time, the chains of delay and stagnation will, will break open. Many of you physically, physically you feel it happening. Thank you, Jesus. Let the word of God come upon this prophecy. Are you ready now? Number one. Are you ready? Number two. Now I want you to get ready. That grace that came upon Elijah and caused him to run, overtaking the chariots of Ahaz. Speed and advancement is coming on people right now. Are you ready? Shout Jesus. Receive it now. Receive it now. Let the earth deliver to your destiny the keys of advancement. I command you to advance. I command you to move forward. I break limitations. I break limitations. I command advancement. Outside advancement. The overflows advancement. May that anointing hit you. Advancement. 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 Advancement in the name of Jesus, the Son of the Living God. No power can stop you. Our God is greater, our God is stronger. God, you are higher than many. Other. Help me. Our God is here. Awesome in power your hands towards me don't lift it up stretch it towards me there is there is going to be an activation of strange gifts strange gifts strange gifts strange gifts the time for impartation will come but fire is living and it's coming upon people and the Lord said let them stretch their hands in the name of Jesus I stretch my hands back to you in the name of Jesus gift 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 don't man gift don't man gift where is it I call it forth now don't man gift don't man gift you may not know it's there I'm not talking of the gifts of the spirit I'm talking of potentials gift gift I stir it up right now like a well, I command it. Like the axe head, I command it to float right now. I command it to float right now. Gift that will bring you honor. Gift. So toko toko to pereke teke te. Gift. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Gift. There is a lady. I'm looking at you now in the realm of the spirit. You are dressed in something that looks like orange, like the house are dressing from your head to who is that? Who is that? Come from this row. Jesus praise. What's your name? Veronica. From where? I came from Abuja. You came from Abuja. As I stood here, I was hearing your prayer, and you were saying, Lord, let this man of God locate him. And the Lord is saying, I should tell you that two things now. Number one is captivity and reproach is being rolled away from your life. That's the first thing that is happening to you. Captivity and reproach. Captivity and reproach. Inside, inside the main auditorium, from where people sit in front, count nine lines, nine rows. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The power of God is coming on somebody on that row right now. Inside. Inside. 
it's a strange miracle coming for that person the ninth row supernatural manifestation of the power of god my sister what do you want the lord to do in your life uh -uh. you are just generalizing huh i'm looking at you and then i'm seeing your heart and i'm seeing should i say it do you believe you can are you married huh where's your husband did you come with him what do you want the lord to do for him see this man is your real prayer point. that's that's you want the lord to honor him and what what is he doing now i'm seeing him leaving that place oh, to another place that has been your desire go and tell him that a man of god has prophesied to him that he's going to leave that place supernaturally supernaturally and that he should stop wasting his time over the person he's calling all the time to help him that's not where his help will come from go and tell him that the lord said he can raise help anywhere in the name of jesus christ i pray amen and amen there is a lady here in this room in this um place i'm hearing grace please let's hurry up quickly so i can leave this place we have to pray for the sick i'm hearing grace grace who is that you are down at that side grace who is that wearing red grace that's okay grace your name is grace this is not this is is it maimuna is it maimuna or something i'm hearing a name maimuna 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 I wish we had time today but we have to pray for the sick i want us to leave this very fast because i'm going to counsel well just leave her i found the person but but you come my dear i want to pray who is this no 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 no. it's not just any grace i'll pray for you my dear lift your hands god wants to visit your family there are four people here a very strange unction for revelation and teaching is coming upon you now no 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 four of you right now a strong power is hitting you right now just in this this place outside i don't know what it is about this place maybe the miracle services will start coming here now there is there's real faith in this place my dear i end it now i end it now in the name of jesus christ Keep your hands on her stomach i end it now i command that reproach taken from your life in the name of jesus don't come out for social reasons but i'm seeing a lady here you have suffered a very terrible infection this is a, a woman issue a terrible infection this thing you have treated it and done everything you know to do but it has refused to go this is witchcraft it's not just a normal infection you have spent your money but right now the Lord is saying I should prophesy to you that it comes to an end, complete end, right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, complete end. I stretch my hands, four people, right now here in this room. Lord, where are they? One is a lady, three are gentlemen. Step into that dimension. That's right, help them. Thank you, Jesus. Hold on. There is a mother here. God wants to wipe her tears. Madam, who is a gala here? Hold on. You are a gala. From where? From where? Oko. Where is that? Is there a place like that in the gala land? Huh? In Kogi State. So that you don't come and tell us lies. If, if you are not from there, just wait. There is your turn will come. From lift your hands i'm seeing an attack on your life and your family and the lord is you free madam where is your child did you come with your child there's no time to waste please i'll just pray for you so that we can go in the name of witchcraft now and on you right now jesus christ in the jesus christ lift your hand say after me in the name of jesus 
say it in the name of Jesus the anointing of the Holy Spirit is bringing into my life strange testimonies lift your voice and begin to pray lift your voice those outside are you praying lift your voice and begin to pray Kai one of the things listen hold on I'm seeing now I want you to believe it I just looked up and I started hearing the cry of as if babies just fill the room listen carefully I just lifted I wanted to move and I just lifted my eyes and the Lord told me that one of the major miracles he's doing tonight is giving people children if you are standing in for barrenness whether you are in any overflow please come in I want to minister to you by myself barrenness only barrenness please husband and wife if you are standing for barrenness except you are standing in for someone if you are standing alone you must be married praise God if you are standing alone you must be married in the name of Jesus may that grace come upon you by the power of the Holy Spirit please stand you can go you can go Pastor Alpha now we are going to pray and while they are doing that let's buy time ushers move around all the overflows make sure you collect the request of everybody I notice overflow three there are few people attending to them there so let's have people you see why we need more ushers and we need more people say after me father, father. everyone shout it father, father. We, receive we receive your visitation, your visitation. in the name of Jesus name. we receive miracles, we receive miracles. signs and wonders now please accept they ask you you don't have to tell them what is wrong don't worry the hand of god is here to bless you in the name of jesus christ father we give you all the praise those online i want you to connect by faith and trust the power of god to touch you we have very few minutes to do this and in the name of jesus will be done no matter what the issue is as we touch you start checking yourself you can register your testimony we'll take it on friday whether you are standing in for someone don't worry the power of god is there to touch you in the name of jesus father we give you all the praise do you know why i came here because i saw that this woman your issue is not just healing hold on i saw the, her holding pictures and a passport and then i'm looking at it and i saw a plane is it something like you were staying outside the country is that true yes sir. because i'm seeing a woman a plane bringing you is that true uh -uh. and the lord is opening my eyes i'm seeing another vision i'm seeing a quarrel between you and a man like your husband and that man drove you yes sir he drove yes sir from where from abroad where is abroad Qatar. from where where is he this is you Ah. oh my god this is a baby look at me why did he drive you away you see why prophecy is powerful look at this woman come madam i looked at these things and the lord told me that this woman needs help i know i'm taking time but let's attend madam don't cry it's okay where were you before no other man we are together in our blood we are together are you, were you married yes sir. you are from where benway stay, sir. you are from benway yes sir you say i told you what god was saying about benway you you married him and went abroad yes sir then what happened he said as you come back my paper is having issue not knowing that he went and married secretly from my community <laughs> So he married another woman yeah from my same community sir <laughs> he's staying abroad with her yes sir. he drove you away with the baby yes sir no he, he drove me when the pregnancy was one week <laughs> did he know you were pregnant no sir immediately i took it he now see, said i should come see, back man listen this this is what we we keep saying again and again please listen to me now i don't mean no disrespect but you see why ladies will tell you people to marry people who are born again not just people who have money huh don't let anybody just come and show you one shoe one bag and just carry you around like that it must be godly look at what this man did for this woman one week and left her with this innocent child so where are you staying now 
Praying out in Abuja. From my it's sister. from Abuja you came? Yes, sir. What do you want God to do for you? I want God to bring him back for me, sir. He married another woman. Yes, sir. She knew you were his wife. Yes, And she still came and married. Yes, my dad is also here, sir. Where's your dad? Daddy, please come, sir. Oh, he cannot walk. After my marriage, I now sell stroke to him, sir. He's from, okay, Benway too. Yes, sir. Why am I seeing light leaving you to this man? Come. What's your relationship with her? He's my stepbrother. I'm a first, uh, I mean, stepbrother, the firstborn of the family. You are the firstborn? Yes, sir. From where? From a Benin state. You are suffering. Hi. Yes, sir. Huh? Yes, sir. Nothing is working your life. Yes, sir. At all. You need the hand of God. Look at your father. Look at this man. Look at this dear man. You see this? This, brothers and sisters, believe it or not, is what witchcraft looks like. Are you seeing this? Whether you are in Qatar or wherever, if that spirit is not destroyed, this is what it will do. Because I stood and I looked at her and I saw a plane carrying a woman, but she didn't look. If you see this woman, does she look like somebody who has gone abroad? I'm not insulting you. You can see that this woman was not even treated well. Suffered with the man. Now we went abroad and sent her back. When this baby now, if we decide to carry this baby and take care of this baby, when this baby becomes responsible, the man will now call the court and come and say he wants his child back. Then they will now accuse men of God and accuse everybody and say everybody is stupid. You are using the baby to make to get power. You see why sometimes we avoid these things it's not because we cannot help people honestly it's because sometimes the media right now are experts at stigmatizing men of god you do anything to try to help this baby now you'll be in trouble are we together help me you're the god of awesome one he stood up your power The Lord is opening my eyes. The same spirit that made that man drive you is making him fight with this woman now. They are not even... No, 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 no. I'm not seeing peace. Huh? I'm not seeing peace. I'm seeing a situation where this man is coming and checking the woman's phone. And then I'm seeing another man's text. And the man is giving her a dirty slap. Slap on her face. The Bible says what God has joined. What's his name? Simon, in the name of Jesus Christ, by the power that created the heavens and the earth, I call you back to your wife. In the name of Jesus, may you encounter a man of God and an anointing that will save you and deliver you there. And I declare in the name of Jesus, this baby will not be a bastard. Baby, I speak to you. Every foundational thing programmed in your spirit as a baby, we cancel it right now. Madam, look at me. I decree and declare the favor that was on Esther that made Hadassah look at her once and had to call her to be his queen. May that favor come upon you. Listen, don't go to any native doctor. You hear me? Because I'm seeing one mama coming to you in Abuja and she's telling you that there's somebody. She told you he's a man of God. He's a native doctor. Don't go anywhere. Huh? And number two, anybody that says you should bring one naira. What did I say? One naira for prayer. Just thank him and walk away. If, if this poor woman, you still collect money from her for prayer, then you must be a very wicked person, isn't it? In the name of Jesus, he will return with testimony. My brother, come. Are you walking? 
What do you want God to do in your life? I'm, I'm a pastor, so when I, I mean, God called me into ministry. So in the field, the back to be, I mean, the things so tough, the the attacks and the uh, foundation, it became so strong. So I took off. I, I couldn't stay. But up, up to now, God is still calling me back to where I serve Him. I've been serving Him to. Where, where Where were you serving? In Kogi State. No. You need mentorship, you need covering, you need impartation. You don't just get up like that and go into ministry. God saved you, they would have killed you like a chicken. There are rules to this thing. Eh? It's not just because you touch somebody and he fell down, you get up and go to Kogi State. Do you know what pursued you back? Eh? It's the mercy of God, it's not witchcraft. They would, you would have died like a chicken. Please listen, I'm not scaring you. But there are systems. Don't get up out of zeal and just say, I am anointed. Be careful. As powerless as Satan is, is your understanding that this depowers him. If you don't have that understanding, you can be anointed and your life will be destroyed. Praise the Lord. My brother, hold my hands. I'm not just seeing you doing ministry. Truly, you need help. Eh? You need help. After service, come and see this man, Pastor Alpha. Eh? After service, come and see him. He will talk with you and guide you and train you and help you. In the name of Jesus Christ. A time of prophecy and activations. Some of you are here because you desire higher levels of unction. Your ministries, your lives, your businesses. The prophetic word of God is very powerful. When there is grace back in it. Because it does not only reveal, it creates. Are we together? In the next about two or three minutes, I want your heart to genuinely and desperately be open. Be open. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. I'm seeing a grace walking in this gentleman. You are the first. I know you are doing protocol work, but you are the first to receive this grace. I see a grace on two of you. Supernatural grace of the Holy Ghost. Taking you to a new dimension. The spirit. Hallelujah. Benga, come. Grace for another dimension of fire. Lift your hands. Grace. Fresh fire. Fresh dimension. Fresh fire. Fresh dimension. Fresh fire. Fresh dimension. Fresh dimension. You speak and there is power of performance. Power of performance. Power of performance. Power of performance. No word will be empty. You speak and there is grace and the power of performance. Hallelujah. Someone come and hold. Victor, come. Come and hold them. Somebody. Grace. Supernatural influence and wisdom and victory in a strange dimension a dimension you have never seen in your life in the name of Jesus supernatural grace I open up that level grace in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ. Where shall they? We're rounding up. They are doing their. Please, someone hold her. I don't want. Hold the child. Speaking, we have just a minute or two. Hold her. Make sure that. Ladies, you come and hold her. Father, in the name of Jesus, the Lord is quickening the power of sight. The grace to see. Grace to see. The grace to see. Make sure you are holding our well. The grace to see. Penny, you are taking back fresh fire. Fresh fire. In the name of Jesus Christ. Fresh fire. I'm not, it's not like I'm just speaking people. This is this is just by the Spirit. Come. The Lord is bringing. Fresh fire, fresh fire, upon your hands in the name of 
Jesus Christ. Listen, you see, hold on. We're out of time, but Pastor, house on the rock, come. You have been desiring something for a long time. Come. God is giving it to you in this season. In the name of Jesus. May that fire, may that grace take it. Drink of that wine in the name of Jesus. Fresh unction. Fresh unction. Capacity. Open up your capacity in the spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. There's a heavy spirit under that small girl. In the name of Jesus Christ. Place it on her. Just place it on her. Leave, leave it there. In the name of Jesus. Judgment upon that devil. Foul spirit. Hallelujah. We're out of time, but I want you to receive. Let me start with the men of God. You are in ministry here. It's time to take something heavy and something genuine. Let me pray. Jaffa, come. Ejimi, come. I'm seeing it. A new, a truly new grace and a new wine. New grace. And a new wine is supernatural dimension. Dimension. This grace will speak in unbelievable ways. Lord, bring him into that experience. In the name of Jesus. Truly bring him into that experience. I open up. I open up. I open up. Closed fountains. I open up now. Closed fountains. I open up now. Fire. Fresh grace for influence 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 business influence new grace new dimensions of wealth influence commanding miracles strange miracles collect that child from hope collect that child from hope in the name of jesus fresh fire hope i activate that dimension fresh fire in the name of jesus god is giving you eyes that see strange dreams revealing direction for people's lives in the name of jesus where's aaron aaron where's aaron in the name of jesus christ the lord says i should tell you seasons of reward are before you seasons of great and strange reward father let it be by the power of your spirit by the power of your spirit lift your hands in the name of jesus christ Something is coming strong. Go. The unction for new levels in ministry at the count of three. If you are here in ministry, there is a call of God upon your life. One, two, that fire comes now. Take that fire now. Take that fire. A new level of ministry, a new level of power. A new level of grace never to be barren never to be barren never to be barren never to be barren where is Yerima head of department media please come quickly quickly I'm praying where is he oh that's him there in the name of Jesus the Lord says he's bringing you honor untold honor untold honor by the spirit of the living God untold honor untold honor untold honor now I decree and declare Jordan where's Jordan Jordan bookstore I hear restoration where are you restoration fire that restoration fire in the name of Jesus everything the canker worm the palmer worm has stolen restoration in the name of Jesus now I pray for you by the power of the Holy Ghost the Spirit of God comes upon you and you begin to run like Elijah I prophesy speed receive it now receive it now speed 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 by the unction of the Spirit speed by the unction of the Spirit speed 
in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Every helper of your destiny that is supposed to show up and partner with you and endorse you to the next level in the name of Jesus I stretch my hands and I place an unction on your life receive of their ministry now receive of their ministry now receive of their ministry now where's pastor house first wife just hold her there she's heavy so in the name of Jesus the Lord is saying have I not said I will bring you favor it will manifest God is bringing favor after you give birth to your child pastor your family will step into a strange level of favor it will be at the commencement of this boy's birth or this child the moment the child is born in the name of Jesus Christ there will be strange miracles by the anointing of the Holy Spirit I pray for you the kind of glory and honor you have never seen upon your life I declare receive it now receive it right now all your tithes your giving God has released the blessings but something has hijacked it in the realm of the spirit Jabakatos Kebranda Lates Kaprete Kapariatos I command the release of your harvest I command the release of your harvest I command the release of your harvest whatever was not working in your life before you came here I decree by the spirit of the living God go back to it and watch it work in a way that will shock you whoever opens his mouth to mock your God goes down immediately I say it again whoever opens his mouth to mock your God goes down immediately anyone here being eyed by the spirit of death to make sure that the earth kills you to make sure that you die or any bad news from your family I cancel it right now in the name of Jesus Christ as you step into the month of May by the power that is in the name of Jesus I declare in one month alone in one month he said have you ever heard this that a city is born in one day he said but as soon as Zion travails she shall put forth a son I declare in one month this month of May a dimension of the ministry of the Holy Spirit to bring you strange results receive it in the name of Jesus receive it in the name of Jesus I pray for your family members in the name that is above all names if they have never testified from January till now I command testimonies from next month I pray for those who are students you wrote your exams you cannot rest you are afraid whatever went wrong I change it now whatever went wrong I change it now I don't care what went wrong I change it now anyone here trusting God for a job by May miracle service as surely as the God of heaven lives may God shake the heavens and the earth and give you your job and you are here you are walking and they've refused to promote you whoever sits on your promotion gets out of his office in the name of Jesus Christ any human being on this earth who has fraternized with the elements of the supernatural to limit your life I pray now I command all the elements of the supernatural to fight them the same way the stars fought for Deborah I command the earth to fight them I command their success to fight them
anyone who has trivialized your grace and neglected what you represent to make sure that doors don't open for you I decree and declare in their presence the Lord will lift you any prayer life here that has died because of carelessness carnality whatever it is sin that has been responsible for destroying your prayer life your passion you were on fire for God but there's laziness carelessness lukewarmness in the name of Jesus like the hair of Samson I command a sevenfold restoration for you now prayer fire in the name of Jesus Christ whatever has destroyed your world life no passion you carry your Bible you don't even know what to study you make up your mind that you will study there is a grace that helps men I pray in the name of Jesus may that enabling grace come upon your life now may that enabling grace come upon your life now the final prayer I want to pray for you listen there is a name that God is called the lifter of men hear me don't let any man lie to you that he can lift you on his own a man can receive nothing except it is given to him do you know lifting is a sign that God is with you yes read your Bible lifting to leave your current position to another is not a sign of big manism it truly is a sign that God is with you read your Bible there is nobody that God was with who he did not lift God who can pick a man from a donkey many of us it's not like you are doing bad but where you are you have been there for a long time everybody is rising and they come and see you spiritually financially please don't let anybody indoctrinate you that lifting is not of God if you are not lifted you will be frustrated at a point because the only way to bless others is as you are rising therefore I speak to your life the God who has gloriously lifted this ministry the God who by his spirit has helped us given us a voice connected us to over 44 nations of the earth supernaturally by his spirit I pray in the name of Jesus wherever on the surface of the earth your lifting is tied to I decree and declare Maraka tosh calibre getela tor mare dos copre te que la baria tata be lifted now in the name of Jesus be lifted now in the name of Jesus I speak to your business whatever you do be lifted now in the name of Jesus I speak to your ministry be lifted now in the name of Jesus they are taking for a prey and none say it restore I say restore I prophesy restore in the name of Jesus wave your hands and give Jesus all the praise hello beloved in Christ we hope this message was a blessing to you I would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us to tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and then if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching in the name of jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise i decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain